Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. It's the January 21st, 2020, first Conservation Commission meeting of the new year. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. And Don, we have a few documents to sign. Certificate of compliance. We got the revised plan that the commission was looking for. Change request right later on in the agenda. Yes. Okay. Okay. The draft minutes of November fifth, two thousand and nineteen. Did everyone get a chance to look at those? Yep. Yes. Comments. Make nope. a motion to approve the minutes, please. So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed. Okay. Sour B25 Stony Brook Road. This is a request for a two year extension permit for the order of conditions. Good evening. Hey. Good evening. Hey. Julian Sour B. New homeowner. Uh, Welcome to town. 13825. Um, we're also here for project change. Um, Julie's just purchased the property uh, December 31st. Okay. Um, and we're here this evening. They have a slightly different house uh, highlighted in the orange. A uh, new type of septic system that got smaller and lower. It's been approved by the Board of Health. Okay. Wetlands are in the back. We have a replication area in here that we're still monitoring. Scott Himes looking at that in the spring. Okay. Um, hay bales in the purple. Uh, recharge was once another driveway has been moved to here. Well has already been installed. Hay is already in to here. Um, driveway shade in the green. Limit of work. We were here back in October of 18 for project change. Limit of work on that project change was here. We're now moving it in here, reducing the amount of work by 730 square feet. We're still replanting this area and this area, uh, totaling 2,500 square feet with shrubbery and wildflowers, as is that. Okay. Wildflowers. Um, essentially it. Retaining wall is less, grading is a little bit less. Uh, driveway is a little flatter. The print of the building, uh, the structure is about the same. Slightly longer, okay. 10 feet longer. Okay. All right, I think that looks pretty straightforward to me. Um, <clears throat> so this is a combination project change request and two-year extension. Yep, yep. There's a, uh, like I said, the hay is in, right. moving yep. around. We have a bunch of stockpile that's <coughs> here. They're anxious to get started. They're applying for a building permit within a couple of weeks. And as soon as the weather breaks, they're going to break ground. Okay. Any questions or comments from the commission? Sure. No. Yep. Wait, just when they're done. Through the chair, we have a question. We want to your attention. Sure. Yes, a couple things. Um, one, the erosion control barrier. I think the silt fence might be all right, but all the straw bales that are in there are all pretty much shot. Okay. The erosion control barrier will need to be refreshed. Yep. And then the larger question is, uh, you mentioned that the wetland mitigation is directly behind the lot here, yep. and it's still under um, annual review for success. Um, have you given any thought to if, if anything needs to be done to that area, especially if any kind of machinery need to get in there, like how that would be accessed? Or uh, Well, we would access it through this driveway. Uh, we're pretty confident that this spring this is going to pass. We've had discussions with Scott in the fall, and he's going to look at it again uh, as soon as it's appropriate, probably first of May or mid-May. So uh, we had one little 
weed, I think that was presenting a problem for us before. Um, so he needs to go back and take a look at that. But yeah, I think because we looked at the 2016 report, yep. and there was there were two areas. So yep. one was meeting the threshold, and the yep. area two was yep. was barely meeting it. Do you yep. know if this is one or two? This is the one on the right hand side is the lower one. Okay. That's the one that's okay. Right. The one that we had an issue with was the upper one. It's two different levels. Right. This one on the left was a little bit dry. Okay. But if you needed to change the elevation of that, you're confident you can get in? Oh, I, we don't envision changing that. Everything's all stabilized on the bottom. We, we, we so that's not in that. as bad a condition as was observed apparently. Uh, in 16? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Correct. We've had some issues with some deer uh, a few years ago uh, out there. Okay, but you'll have access to the area through the driveway if you need to get back there? Correct. Okay. All right. Uh, any comments? Okay. If I can get a motion to approve the project change request as discussed. So moved. And a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And if I can get a motion to um, issue the two year extension on the order conditions. So moved. And a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very, very good. Much. Good luck. Silva 38 Stony Brook Road. This is another request for a two year extension. Uh, I'm not sure. He's here, so bring up. Oh, is that Stony Brook? He's here? I'm not sure, but let me at least bring up his electronics. He wants Bale cell phones are in good shape. Uh, on the conservation lot. The excavation and framing is done, but needs to be approved after windows are installed. Hopefully this week, most of the earth moving is done. Some landscaping up the septic front yard is put in place. Also, basement garage floor needs to be poured. No interior work has been done in terms of plumbing. So they still need time to complete the project. Okay. <coughs> we don't foresee any issues, though, at this point. I don't think so. It looks pretty straightforward. Okay. Okay. Um, if I get a motion to approve the two year extension of the order conditions for 38, or excuse me, 25 Stony Brook Road? You were right, 38. Oh, was it? Okay. I should put my glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 38 Stony Brook Road. So moved. In a second, please. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Very good. All right, McLaughlin one and three Oakhurst Road. This is another project change request. Yeah. So a few yeah. uh, trees they want to remove. Yeah. It's like. remember um, when the application first came in we just had edge of lake through here right and they, they basically had like an erosion control kind of like a straight line then when they learned the, the BVW was here they made adjustments and they put this finger up through here trying to save some of the trees and then they the owner had um, had concern about um, this large uh, white oak that was growing over so when I went with Gary um, uh, to look at it, we looked at all the trees. 
you know, and we thought some of them were, were problematic, especially these, these white pines, uh, uh, the pine up here. Some of the other hardwood, the, the hardwoods like black birches, they seemed fine, but it just didn't seem like it, this would be the, a good place, to, especially if you saw those pictures I sent. Yeah. Um, th this tree is, you know, not looking that well. And when some of these trees come out, the pine here might be more exposed too. So um, what he was hoping to do was to take out um, uh, the trees that he mentioned and replace them with, uh, with like 12 or 15 shrubs all through here. So the area would still have canopy with the trees that would remain. Mm -hmm. um, but these, the, the pines and that one white oak were considered problematic. So, so it was two pines and the one white oak? Yeah, let me show you the pictures. So you had, um, and you had smaller ones associated with it. So let me drop this. So that one this, is, this is the finger right here, you know? Yeah. So starting, you got this pine right here. Yeah. And then you've got, that's the same pine right there. So you got that. That's a big, so you got this pine here. And these two small ones. Yeah. So those would be the four down close, all through here. One, two, three, and there's the big one. And there they are again. And then so, where's the white oak? So coming up. So there are the four again. And the, uh, one of the pines is practically the, the, the side the pine, not even that house. big one, are actually on the house now. So here's the white oak right here, right there right there and then you've got the pines that are right behind it so you get a the white oak here and you get the large pine this is the end of the finger right okay. here so the white oak here i've got an aerial of it it's growing up i take it here it is yeah, right yeah. here it's going over right okay. to the, over the roof so you got the white pine there and then it's these small some of the black birches are, are he wants to keep but it's anything that is the white pines, the, the small ones like that one. Yeah, the pines. Uh, yeah, These, I, I agree. The, most of them are, are, are saplings, you know, they're, they're small. Yep. But obviously they're going to get problematic over time. This is the, the large one okay. here, right at the end. Okay. So. All right, is everyone okay with that? All right. Um, if I can get a motion to approve the project change request as discussed, the removal of one white oak and a couple of white pine. So moved. And a second, please. A second. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And he'll work with you on uh, what type of shrubs yeah, that yeah, yeah, we, we can put in shrubs. I'll give him uh, the, give uh, him the list. list. Yeah, exactly. He'll try and spread them out evenly so they'll cover the area. Okay. Thanks. Do we skip seven on purpose? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, number seven, Ajo, 42 West Elm Street, request for a one-year extension permit for the order of conditions. This yeah. is another one, Donnie. He's got a few more things. He needs to button up on the project. Yeah, exactly. But he's he's you know well away along on the on the project. But he's a little more time. He thinks he's going to wrap it up like within a year. Yeah, yeah. Well, we should have this CR yeah. in place. Yeah, he's just asking right. for one year, so he doesn't think he needs that much. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm looking okay at that. Um, yeah, and the uh, state has um, finalized the um, all the draft CR, so we've got a final CR now that's going to get ready for signatures. So I think his attorney should be moving forward with getting that done. Okay. All right, can I get a motion to approve the one-year extension permit for the order conditions for 42 West Elm? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you, Melissa. Okay. REC Hopkinton, 0 Chamberlain Street and 0 Wayland Road. This is a violation hearing. Good evening. Good evening. Don, do you have a copy of the letter I sent in here? No. Okay, I got it.
Okay. So you got a copy of the letter, Ms. Sherry? The commission sent. Okay. Not the overview. That's just a you know kind of a draft for you guys as a as a starting point. And if you guys finalize something, if if the commission finalizes anything, we would write up whatever you guys determine. Got it. Okay. All right. So at the last meeting, um, I think most of the commission was there. It was a violation, um, which was the uh, removal of some trees from the buffer zone um, during a recently approved portion of the project um, on the Chamberlain side, or excuse me, on the Whalen side. Um, there was some stormwater issues on the Chamberlain side. Don went through um, the violations, kind of tallied up what the total was, and the total uh, that he calculated was $20,100. Um, so that's the starting point for the commission to discuss. Uh, just in past practice, we typically um, look to take 10 to 20 percent of the over, overall violation amount um, that's actually assessed. Uh, and then we also typically um, assess a portion of that 10 or 20 percent to be fined immediately and then a portion of it to be held up in abeyance um, until the project's complete. And then if there's further violations on the property, um, then the uh, commission has the ability to um, that portion of the fine that's held in abeyance um, to assess that at a later point in time if there is a violation. So, you know, I'll just open it up to the commission um, to discuss, uh, you know, what your thoughts are on um, what portion should be actually assessed immediately and what portion should be held in abeyance. Um, you know, I have my thoughts, but I also wanted to open up to, to you folks um, to get your input as well. So, is there any extra copies of that letter? Yeah. I can post it. So we haven't received a copy of that letter. That wasn't. Yeah, this that was, this was, that's what you were saying, Don. Right? This was actually Basically, a memo to the commission. It's a, okay. it's a starting point. It's adding up okay. from the date you guys provided the date. Yep. All we did was just plug in because each each one is a per violation. Mm -hmm. But as you read the uh, the regulations, the commission has wide discretion to make assessments so that's why I was like well whatever I'm writing doesn't mean anything you know so if the Commission comes up with a decision at the meeting as a group then we write it and exactly. present it to you but right now it's just a working draft for them to okay yeah, yeah so before, before the Commission actually starts our discussion I think it would be helpful because I did talk with mr. Mastriani mm -hmm. a couple times since this violation happened you know, he apprised me of some of the steps you guys have taken since then to make sure it doesn't happen again. So I think it'd be helpful just to provide the commission with an overview of some of the you know proactive things that you guys have done. Sure. Um, uh, why don't I start and then sure, I'll ask right. Scott and George want to join in. So we were before the commission back in December when the issue was identified and we came for the discussion. Since that time, we've taken a number of corrective, corrective actions to basically stabilize the site, bring the site up to code, and as well as put into effect some additional um, oversight and management. So from the oversight and management standpoint, we do have the SWIP inspectors in place, and that's with Goddard Consulting. Mark Arnold, he was here with us um, at the previous meeting. They're doing weekly site inspections and maintenance logs, publishing bi-weekly reports, which have been submitted since that time every couple weeks. They've gone directly to Mr. McAdam. Um, Bowler, this is John Cusick from you're probably familiar with them. Um, they're more involved on a weekly basis to provide some additional support and oversight um, to the contractor and to the team. To date, we've done two site walkthroughs um, with conservation's agent as well as your peer review engineer to confirm that what we've done on the site, those corrective actions are adequate um, and are working in the right direction. From the site perspective, we've dealt with all the initial issues that were identified as far as the silt fence issues, repairs, expansion of, replacement, et cetera. 
um, and we've done quite a bit of work around the temporary basins on the Chamberlain side to deal with the issues there. So, and that's Scott, I don't know if you want to add any more detail. This, this is just a schematic on the, um, the Chamberlain side to show where those basins are. So this is when you come in Chamberlain here. These are three different drainage basin areas that contribute this temporary stormwater management areas here, here, and here. We do have sized basins by uh, Bowler's design and the confirmation in the field that, that we have the volume uh, required by design. Uh, we've looked at this in the field with, with your staff and uh, by and large, you know, we think we're in pretty good shape here. We're making some minor modifications to the outlet uh, control spillway areas. We have diversion pipes and check dams so that the, you know, there's no water really leaving the site now in an uncontrolled fashion. And uh, there's the reports go through the corrective steps that have been taken during that one week period and a checklist of anything that's outstanding. So short of having the just some disturbed shoulder areas that still need a little bit of stabilization, but with this frozen and snow covered ground right now, that's not much of an issue, but we're just preparing for stabilization measures uh, once that we have that exposed soil again. Other than that, the site is in uh, a good, you know, big picture condition right now to, to sit as it's conditioned for, for the time it's needed to go to the next step of this project. We also then did the Wayland side uh, survey that was requested of, of your staff. And this isn't a colored up, but we just identified spots within the buffer zone here, 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 where, where tree clearing was done but it all was within the permitted area. Nothing was went beyond what the order conditions called for. We just sort of went out of sequence with respect to pre-construction meetings and whatnot. So we did provide that to uh, Don via email as well. Okay. So just to clarify, so you've been retained by yes. REC Correct. going forward on the project yep. as well as Bull yes. as yes. the project manager? Yes. Okay. okay. We're out, we're out there weekly and then before and after each storm and working directly with the contractor and he's being very responsive. All right. Matt, did you have any comments? Um, just a, I guess a question on the basin figure. You know, for, um, um, maybe this is a question more for John. So the, were the basins that were built that we looked at on Friday, have those been as builted? Surveyed in some way to determine what their volume is based on there has not been a um, an as-built uh, Survey by, by survey. I know the contractor went out there and, and measured excuse me measured them off to make sure they were the proper size I've gone out and done a visual of them to see how they, they generally look and they appear correct There has not been an actual as-built survey of them. I, I think what's frankly more important than the survey is just to monitor them make sure the water that's getting there is getting there. We've actually provided some bypass. Like this one doesn't quite need to be as big as it is because we've bypassed some of the clean water mm -hmm. from it, but we still kept the, um, the size of that. So I think it's really critical that we make sure that the water is getting to that and it's functioning the way that they, um, they need to. Okay, because I know that especially the one in the middle, I think we're calling it Basin 2, where it was kind of added to a sort of very odd shape now as far as, you know, ensuring that it's that has the, the right capacity. Yeah, and, um, and that's the one where I think it's been bypassed. There's kind of an area that comes down here. You can see we've got some flow mm -hmm. that really kind of concentrates. Uh, what we've done is to clean water on the, you know, we've captured it before it gets into here and diverted that outside of it. So we're not essentially putting clean water through disturbed areas. Um, to be conservative, I did not strip that out of the calculation. I wanted to keep this as big as possible. So if we took that out, would likely be half the size of what that would be when you actually run the numbers. Okay. And then I guess question for you, Scott. When we were out there on Friday, we had talked about some of the outlets of the basins didn't really appear to be sufficiently armored. Correct. Um, has that all been addressed now? So that's on the short list of Mr. McCure. I went out the other day to see if it was done. It wasn't done yet. So if you went out there, it's not, but it's on his short list of things to do. Okay. I think that definitely should be done before any more precipitation. Four shorts. Oh. Yes, we're in agreement on that. So any idea being on the short list when it will get done? Hey, we'll, have, we'll have them done by the end of the yeah. week. Yeah, all, all it's talking about, so at the outlets of these, 
the spillways are a little bit too low so that we're not getting full basin capacity. So we're just going to add additional stone on those outlet areas. And the, and the stone in the areas, I think, John, you would agree, was undersized. Yeah. So essentially, we had some um, some smaller stone that was placed on top of the um, on top of the spillways. Uh, what we're going to do is just put some larger, heavier stone, just so from an erosion standpoint, if you happen to get a very, very large storm, uh, storm some of that smaller stone wouldn't be impacted. So the smaller stone would stay in place. You just put a larger stone on top of it. I'll confirm with him and make sure that it's done by Friday. Yeah, least. that picture is a good example right there. So we're just going to fill that crevasse up with yeah, additional so the, stone. Yeah, so the issue that, that we had was that, so you've got obviously the bottom of the basin is here. This is the outlet. The, the stones there currently seemed a bit undersized. and then. It really should carry all the way up the side because if this if this gets to full capacity, it really starts flowing significantly. You know, the fact that if it gets behind this fabric here or behind the stone at all, then all this is you're just going to lose the whole thing. So it's really critical. You know, this is the, the potential weak point kind of in the whole thing. So it's critical that that get um, you know put together properly. And in all three of the basins, that was sort of the the concern. Yeah, we're we're in agreement there. Yeah. Okay. May I ask those pictures were taken when? Before the recent snowfall? 17th, Friday? Friday. I'm just looking at the weather. It's supposed to be above freezing for the rest of the week with a lot of the rain coming by the end of the week. You should be able to do it tomorrow. It's not that big of an effort to, you know, dump some stone in there, you know, for sure. So we'll talk, we'll talk to them tomorrow, make sure it's... Okay, thank you. Okay, well, we appreciate you being proactive here and, you know, addressing... Um, the issues that, that Matt and Don have identified at the site. And, you know, in speaking with Mr. Mastriani, I also appreciate, you know, the fact that, um, you know, he did acknowledge that there was a mistake made on site, um, that the controls weren't in place with the contractor, um, so the oversight was a little bit lax. Um, but, you know, he, he did basically uh, you know, admit to that, which, which we again we appreciate that. So, um, you know, I just want to open it up to the commission now. Um, so, it's a twenty thousand dollar violation that's been tabulated. Again, we typically, um, or historically, with these types of violations, particularly when the contractor is uh, working with us to bring the site back into compliance, we assess a twenty or a ten or twenty percent. Um, that a portion of that is held in abeyance, and a portion is assessed um, to be paid to the town. So I'll open it up to you folks for discussion on you know what we feel is appropriate. So when you say assess 10, 20 percent, and the abeyance is the 80 percent. Yeah. Or, or the advance is we, we do part of the 20% and we hold the rest of the 20% in advance. Typically, it's you would, you, yeah, if you, if you, if you folks said 20%, you would assess a $20, 20% 20 fine, you would hold 80 in advance, and then a future problems, then you could look at the, at the 80, you know, at the 80%. You could, and then if you had a, a future problem, you could say, all right, well, let's, let's do half of it, let's do all of it, let's do. Whatever you know, every, there is no set standard. Everything's everything's unique. So you guys look at the whole issue at hand and figure out what you think is appropriate. Okay. What stage um, is construction at right now? The road, the utilities are in the road, and the roads paved. In is that? So on, on this side here, the, the road is, is paved. You've got the, the waters in there. The catch basins are, are within the road. Mm -hmm. um, the actual, the final drainage basins are not constructed with the, um, mm -hmm. with the pipe going to those drainage basins. You can kind of see them in the, in the back. The sediment basins are in front of them. So the roadway infrastructure is essentially done. The finalization of the drainage to go to the final basins is not finished yet. So the, so the catch basins are plugged or something or the pipes or where are they they're, they're going to the temporary yeah they'll go to the temporary basins or if not it's diverted um, diverted to it 
uh, this one down here, essentially, the last one in the cul-de-sac, it's plugged up because um, it can't drain to that. So that will essentially overflow uh, to it. So I'll just say I found the violations upsetting. Um, I think we found them after you guys came in with uh, initial proposed homes. And then we looked at a map, and then I looked at Google Earth and saw the clearing, and that's where we started this. Say, oh my gosh, look how much has been cleared. Um, I wasn't at the last meeting, but I did watch it on TV. And it just struck me that there was a kind of, I, I don't know, I want to be careful with my words. We're in the woods, cavalier attitude to how the clearing was going. With that said, if we, if I'm understanding, Jeff, what you're saying about the, the 10, 20 percent, a two to four thousand dollar fine on a project of this size seems like a pittance to me. And I would argue for a much more substantial percentage to be paid up front. Okay. Anyone else? Is it fair to ask what the site contract value is? Ballpark. Order of magnitude. I, I mean, okay. I, well, outside of I'll take it so. outside of magnitude, I think it's more of is it a deterrent or not from it happening again? And I don't think two thousand dollars is a deterrent from it happening again. Well, I would I would agree to that, but if you're holding eighteen thousand. I guess my other question was, will Matt or Don take a, a site tour this week to see that the work that they're saying will be done will be is done? Yeah, certainly one of us can get out there. Yeah, if they notify us that the work's done, we can check on it. Yeah, and the other point I'll make too is, um, you know, if there are future violations at the site, then you know the percent that's being held in advance. Would be required to be paid as well as what it, additional fines are assessed so it wouldn't just be um you know the ceiling wouldn't be the amount that's held in abeyance it could be additional um fines on top of that as well so um. so i just want to understand so the 80 percent that's held in advance is there are no more violations so what happens to that 80 percent typically the, the commission would say uh, they would hold it until a certificate of compliance is issued, and if there was no problems, then they they would revisit it to see if they want to dismiss it or or, or assess it or yeah. whatever. So it's just it's kind of like just held in reserve. It's not going away, you know. All right. So typically, what we unless done, you guys voted to go away. Yeah. Right. So typically, what we've done is as long as there are no future issues at the site and the contractor is doing what they're supposed to do out there. Um, in good faith um, and is in compliance with the order of conditions, um, then usually it's, it's waived, typically how we do it. Um, if there are future violations, then, you know, we go back to the table and discussing on, you know, how much gets assessed, whether it's the full amount again, depending on the nature of the violation and what additional um, fines are associated with those um, additional violations. I think Ed raises a good point that if you hold more in abeyance, it's leverage. I would also say $10,000 is a pretty good amount of leverage as well. $100 is terrible leverage. <laughs> <laughs> well. um, as far as the, the reports, the bi, the bi weekly, do we say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bi-weekly. Um, are those things that Mac gets copied on to take a look at? Are you or talking not about? typically? Yeah, they can, they come in and both Matt and Don review them, right? Yeah, you're talking the erosion swept reports? Yeah. 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 You're on the email. I believe so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we've gotten the construction status report, and then we got one on January 9th and one on January 16th. I thought Matt I think, so. I think, I think it's in the email chain. And we've had two site walks over the last few weeks mm -hmm. with these guys as well. Yeah, so. I guess um, in addition to 
you know, what goes on with the violation um, amounts, having Matt um, and Don have the ability, whether that's helping to be, you know, pay the bill or whatever for them to go out every mm -hmm. once in a while, or if we start to get concerned with what's seen in the reports, would make me feel a little more comfortable. Um, I know that reports can get written every two weeks and people get busy and they don't get read and then things, you know, can mm -hmm. tend to slip and just because it's written in a report doesn't always mean it gets followed up on, so um, I would feel more comfortable if they were given the latitude to do a site visit, you know, once weekly. a month or weekly, <laughs> whatever, but when, I mean, depending, I trust the reports and whatnot, but a lot of times there's checklist items on there that unless someone is really keeping an eye, they will yeah. just, you know, reports can sit in a file and not necessarily get followed up on. Right, yeah. And if we wait, you know, two weeks for them to go out and do another inspection, that's two weeks where something was put in a report and we're kind of assuming it gets corrected. Yeah. But it's not always at the top of the contractor's list. Right. No, I think I think that's a fair point. Um, yeah, there's not much activity going on going on at the site, and it doesn't make sense for you to be out there as frequently. But once the work, you know, starts to get rolling, um, I think it makes sense to have you guys looking at those reports, and if it makes sense for you to do site visit be out there then you know the commission has a latitude to, to have you go out um, and take a look at it do the inspection so I mean if that's part of what that you know money that's being held is for or how that gets yeah gets I think that's, that's the consultant fees yeah that's the consultant, the consultant fees. fees right yeah. and then if the more we're out there and if we burn through it they have to pay more right because yeah, it, is, so it from, is in the middle of the woods. It's not something that people yeah, drive so by all the time. Yeah, so from my perspective on a project of this size is um, usually after the pre-construction meeting has been held, I'll kind of go out and start to do somewhat regular inspections, you know, talking to Don. If he's already been out there, I might not go out. Um, you know, read the SWIP reports and make sure. I mean, the, the, the thing I obviously look for on the reports is, is there some, something that said, um, you know, the consultant, Connor has pointed out says this needs to be addressed and it's showing up two or three reports in a row without mm -hmm. any action then that kind of catches my attention that okay we need to at least put a phone call and say what's going on with this um, and usually with, with me if a project seems like it's going smoothly and, and everything seems like it's being handled well you know I might start out going out there weekly and then kind of cut it back as time goes by but that being said you know if you guys want me to do a weekly inspection out there or how often however often you want I can I can just work it into my schedule that it just becomes, you know, part of the routine. So if you want to say, you know, do it weekly for a month, and then if everything's going fine, go to bi-weekly and then monthly. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm here to do whatever you guys need. So. Mm -hmm. And then I've always given Bob and and um, Matt the the direction. You're reading the report, then you're going out and you're seeing if it actually looks like what the report said, and if it doesn't, then we tend to go out more. If right. it does and everything's moving along, we tend to go out less because we a trust is built up, mm -hmm. you know. So it's it's usually more at the beginning and then it, it sort of peters, you know, as it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense, Matt. You know, you you know, we'll defer to your judgment rather than laying out a definitive schedule. You know, I think going out once a week, um, you know, initially for the first few weeks makes sense. And if things look like they're in check you know we can we can pull that back to every two weeks or every three weeks depending on how much work's going on it also depends on the weather too you know, yeah. if it gets into the deep freeze and everything's frozen solid then you don't need to be out not going to be much moving but if you know if things warm up and we're getting a lot of rain or melt or whatever then it's you know more likely that something bad might happen okay all right well um so what I'd like to suggest, I want to kind of move this along here. We've been talking about it for a while now. We have other things on the agenda. I think 10,000 to me, um, you know, 50% seems uh, a little bit high given the fact that the, con uh, the 
REC has been proactive. They've hired the project manager, they've got a consultant, been hired now to oversee this. Um, and given the stepped up uh, site inspections that, that Matt's going to be performing here going forward, um, you know, I would suggest 25% uh, paid and then 75% held in abeyance. I'll throw that out there and just get your feedback on that. But I'd support that. I'd rather see the money spent on actual inspections and inspections and erosion controls. Works for me. Works for me. <coughs> Ted? I don't want to rock the boat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so let's just, uh, if I get a motion to that effect, please. I'll make a motion. And a second. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And opposed? Okay. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you. I do anticipate coming back to you with the amendment request, too, as discussed shortly on this. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Okay, Petrosi. Uh, no. Oh. No. Franklin Road. oh, Franklin Road Solar, LLC. <laughs> Mr. Petrosi, we have one more sorry, applicant. Sorry. I, I went out of order, sorry. I apologize. Hopkins and Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, January 21st, 2020 at 7.30 at the Hopkins and Senior Center, 28 Mayhew Street, to hear all persons interested in a notice of intent filed by Franklin Road Solar LLC for the installation of a ground-mounted solar facility with associated site work. The location is 0 Franklin Road. Assessors map U7, block 7, lot 0, a portion of 71 Franklin Road. Assessors map R9, block 5, lot 0, and a portion of rear Franklin Road. Assessors map R9, block 4, lot 0. Good evening. Good evening. some paper copies of the aerial photo that's gonna yep, so. go up on the board. Yeah, no problem. Nick Fassendall, Level Design Group, civil engineer for the project. With me is Pedro Rodriguez, the applicant's representative. If there's anybody in the audience, copies. Board up there. <laughs> All right. So, um, here on behalf of uh, the applicant, representing them for this notice intent application, uh, we were here before the commission, I believe back in November, for uh, resource area delineation on this same property. So hopefully this site is familiar to most of the commissioners. Um, what we have here is a uh, proposed five megawatt DC ground mounted solar facility, which will be located within this area of the parcel. The uh, total parcel area is approximately 86.37 acres. So that includes this entire area up through here. We recently uh, had the property subdivided through the a and uh, process. We divided off this portion of the site up here. That's a separate parcel that, and that is the Ashland and Hopkinton town line. <clears throat> that parcel is approximately 1.84 acres. We then divided the remainder of the site in Hopkinton into two parcels, which kind of runs up through here, this edge of the parking lot, and over through here. 
that's about a 15.8 acre parcel and that contains all the site appurtenances for the former uh, Liberty Mutual test track facility. There's an existing 77,000 square foot, um, I call it industrial office building with associated septic system, stormwater management system, and site utilities and parking. So that's all remaining on its own parcel. Uh, then we have the remainder, which is approximately 69 acres. Uh, where we're going to be pro we're proposing the proposed ground-mounted solar array. So that's just a little bit of uh, the work that's been done to date. Uh, so we've had that plan endorsed by both Hopkinton and Ashland. Um, just to kind of refresh the uh, commission's memory on the on-site resource areas uh, as part of the um, in-place ORAD. We have a BBW located in this area right here. We have a second BBW identified in green in this area. The yellow is the buffer zone. There's a 30 inch, or excuse me, 36 inch culvert which connects these two BBWs. And then we also have um, isolated wetland in this area and up in this area here. We have an intermittent stream coming up through this area. And we have a, a non, well, a local jurisdictional intermittent stream up through this area right through here. Um, so kind of quick refresher of the on-site resource areas um, on that plan, every, all the buffer zones, uh, 50, 75, and 100 are shown in yellow. Green is the BBW, purple are the isolated wetlands, and light faded orange are the intermittent streams. Um, portion of the site is located in the uh, town of Hopkinton, Water Resource Overlay Protection District that generally runs through this area right through here. Uh, um, you know, the property is not located in any of the following areas, uh, natural heritage, uh, endangered species areas, or um, estimated areas of priority habitats, uh, areas of environmental concern. Uh, we're not located in any of those. There's no FEMA flood hazard zones within the site. We're not located in any, any um, wellhead protection areas, uh, zone one or two. We're not located in any uh, surface water protection areas, zones A, B, and C. And um, that pretty much describes what we're not located in. Um, as far as uh, overall site topography and ground cover conditions, uh, the existing site in this area right through here, there's a poor paved portion of the existing uh, what they call the test track from the former uh, Liberty Mutual facility. That's a large paved area where um, automobile testing I believe occurred. There's an associated paved driveway which leads from this main paved driveway up through here. So this section all through here is <clears throat> existing paved area. Um, Site grades uh, throughout the site, a majority of the parcel, you know, this area right through here drains towards this BBW. There's a small little section kind of up through the here which drains down towards this isolated vegetative wetland. Uh, there's a small portion around this isolated wetland which drains towards that area and uh, a large portion of this area drains towards this BBW and this portion of the site up through here runs over land towards this on-site pond. There's really no formal stormwater management system for the existing paved areas. There's a small um, paved inlet, so essentially stormwater from the, this portion of the driveway right here, you know, just runs right into uh, the wetland area um, as, as exists today. Um, So as far as the proposed development, um, as I stated before, we are looking to construct ground mounted solar array, capacity of five megawatts DC as shown here. The solar panels will be mounted on a racking system, which uh, the racks have four points of contact with the ground. They're typically screw anchors uh, in most scenarios that are driven into the ground about three to four feet and um, those are adjustable to uh, accommodate various terrain 
um, where the system is being installed. Is there any battery storage? There is. I'm getting to that. Uh, we have uh, battery storage and main uh, transformers for the project will be located in this area. Um, the utility company prefers to have those as close to the main access of the site as possible as uh, they're required to be provided easements. So they'll be provided an easement up through this area um, to access the main equipment and battery storage. There's also a small equipment pad in this area right here and a small intermediate equipment pad located in that area right there. Um, power generated from the site, the, the utility is going to install a series of poles abutting the existing driveway up through this area right here that will connect to the existing utility infrastructure within Franklin Road. So there's three phase power in Franklin Road so it's not a large uh, or a lengthy connection to for the utility company to make. Um, so overall site disturbance as shown on this proposal uh, as I stated before the development parcel which was divided off which I'm calling lot one is approximately 69 acres uh, as shown we're disturbing 28 acres majority of that disturbance is tree clearing and stump removal um, we're not looking to do any major site grading or cuts within the proposed array majority of the uh, grading will occur for the driveway uh, that's going to be installed or as, as proposed around the perimeter of the site and uh, grading associated with the proposed five stormwater basins. We have one here, there's one located in there, one there, one here, and one, two, three, four, and one in that area. Oh, sorry, one down here, the fifth basin. Um, so this will leave approximately 60% of the site in an undisturbed state. Um, you know, the applicant's committed to holding that 60% or 41 acres um, as undeveloped, as undisturbed land, and uh, they'll be working with um, the town on a way of preserving that, um, that, that unused land area. So we're not looking to install this project and then come back, you know, a few years later and look to expand in a different area. So we're committed to this footprint and, um, you know, looking to preserve the remaining uh, site as uh, open space. You know, there'll be a large portion that could be dedicated up, in, up through this area with the existing pond. And uh, there's also a large area around this existing BBW up front, which we could um, also dedicate as undeveloped open space. So as part of the development, we're looking to remove approximately 12,000 square feet of this existing paved area. Uh, we're going to be using part of this paved area uh, to mount the uh, proposed equipment and battery storage. So you know, where we're putting the equipment, it's already impervious coverage today. So we're not creating additional impervious coverage to install the um, pads for the battery storage and other equipment and we'll be using uh, the paved area as proposed for a portion of the driveway up through here. Uh, the remainder of the driveway that's proposed is a 20 foot wide gravel access driveway uh, which will be circulating the proposed array to provide access for maintenance uh, staff and for um, public safety. Um, Let's see what else. Um, okay, I think that's a good overview. Yeah, that pretty much we'll covers that, most of it. Yeah. One thing that I wanted to add. So, we submitted our application um, or NOI, an application with special permit, back in December before Christmas, mm -hmm. and I was notified by the Huffington Lab Trust um, recently about the trails. I look at it in the property. There's one trail that is being maintained by them, um, and then, yeah, the rest of the so the red trail is maintained by HALT, the mm -hmm. blue trails are now maintained by them, and I went back to Liberty Mutual to see if there was some sort of agreement with someone else or easement for those trails, because they provide public access. So as of right now, um, those trails are, don't have actual legal public access. Um, one thing that we're committed to do, and I met with, the, with HALT uh, yesterday, is that we're looking to preserve most of these trails 
Um, so that's one of the reasons why we will be looking to um, allocate 60% uh, of the property into open space um, so they can manage that and that will um, provide legal access uh, to the uh, public right now because as Liberty expressed today, um, they're technically trespassing. And uh, mm. also, we also found um, a haunting stand uh, in one of those trails while we were surveying. So I believe that if halt is going to be managed, and that's something that is not going to happen. Um, there's that trail that goes, the red trail that they manage. Something that we're going to be doing is that we're going to be looking at the sign of, of the rave right now to see how we can preserve uh, that trail, um, maybe minimizing the size of the rave a little. Um, the other blue trail that kind of divides the property into half, we are in talks right now with Eversort for the gas easements that they have. As of right now, we are going to be enclosing the entire project into with one fence. One thing that we're looking with them is to see if we can fence the north portion and the south portion so that will maintain the trail that goes to the property. So again, I was no notified of these trails um, after we submitted the application. So now we're going to be looking into um, how to look at the project again and talks with HALT, how to preserve it the best way possible so okay. we can ensure access to the public. So there, um, a portion of their trails on the property, but technically they don't have access to that portion. Yeah, exactly. And even the HALT trail is being maintained by them, but there's no right, um, right. easement. Right. Or not That's the one I meant, yeah, yeah. the HALT trail. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I'm sure, I don't know if you guys know, but in the uh, in our introduction with the plan where um, we mentioned that we're going to be buying Liberty Mutual's building, we're going to be managing that building. Uh, so it's not just a solar project, we're going to be owning and managing the entire a property and the portion of the building, the land or the building parcel that is not being used, we also don't have any intention of expanding it and that's also going to be allocated to the open space. Okay. All right. That's uh, good information to have. Thank you. Um, all right. So you got the memo from Lucas? Cor yes, we did. Okay. So there's a, you know, some housekeeping type things that need to be looked at. Um, I don't think we need to go through all of them tonight, mm -hmm. um, but a couple jumped out at me. So one of the ones, one of the comments was the road around the perimeter of the array. Yes. Um, you know, does that need to actually go around the entire perimeter and does it have to be 20 feet wide? I guess is the question. So once we received the letter, uh, Pedro and I did have some discussions about that and we've uh, reached out to the fire department to have a meeting with them. Uh, we had, still haven't had that meeting, but to discuss what's the minimum access they'd be looking for within, within the site. So, you know, Pedro and I have discussed, you know, if there's a possibility of you know, essentially removing this portion of the driveway up through here and possibly this portion down here. So we would have a driveway that comes in, up and around, <coughs> down and around, and then down to this point and do some type of turnaround. Okay. Which we feel that, you know, that would remove a large portion of the driveway, which, you know, it's not all in the buffer zone, but it does dip in and out of the buffer zone. Um, it is the closest portion of the driveway, a large portion of that. Uh, does go, you know, as you can see, it goes right around the buffer zone of that intermittent stream. So um, we're going to be, that's the, the request we're going to make to the fire department, and we'll discuss um, reducing the width. I mean, we could go down to 16 to 18 feet if it's acceptable to the fire department uh, as far as access goes. Okay. You know, because these guys, they just typically drive, you know, pick up trucks through there, you know, every couple weeks, right. you yeah. know, for uh, you know, landscape maintenance or if they have to replace a panel. So they don't need large equipment mm -hmm. uh, to get in there. So it's basically going to be uh, whatever the fire department needs for access to the site. Okay. All right. Because, yeah, the, I mean, all the panels, it seems to me, are outside the 100-foot buffer zone, so we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, there's portions of the road, you know, that are yep. um, extending into the buffer zone, so we want to try to minimize that. Um, okay, so that's good. And I guess the second uh, comment that jumped out at me was the portion of the site that's paved where there are panels. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it just seems to me that it would make sense um, to remove the pavement rather than leaving it there. Okay. Um, just from stormwater issues and, and uh, surface water infiltration um, benefits. So I think that if you guys can take a look at that. Um, I understand, you know, where the battery storage is going and the utilities and transformers, you know, that's fine. You can leave the pavement in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think, you know, based on the amount of clearing that's going to go on, I think to Matt's point, we would want to ha have a uh, um, habitat uh, evaluation uh, performed. <clears throat> some of the other, a lot of the other ones were fairly, you know, minor in nature. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of some cleanup type stuff. Yep. Um, and recommendations on phasing, that type of thing. Um, and I think we, the alternatives analysis, that was another one, uh, that, that was another recommendation uh, from Lucas, and I believe we required that for the other sites yeah. as well. So I think that's something that we're going to need. I think those were the major ones from my perspective. Matt, do you have any other? No, I think you probably hit kind of the, the bigger ones. I mean, there's, <clears throat> there's quite a bit of stuff here along that is just kind of basic cleanup stuff. <clears throat> but I presume you guys will do a formal response to. Correct, yeah. Our goal is we're meeting with the planning board next week for our first hearing for stormwater and uh, site plan special permit so um, we want to get everybody's initial comments in and uh, we're going to be doing some additional uh, test pits on site for stormwater purposes and uh, we have some uh, cleanup items to do for stormwater comments and like i said if we do eliminate some of the driveways and reconfigure uh, we'll be modifying the, the reports uh, to you know correspond with that type of modification so um, and we'll be looking to address all this stuff in writing. Hit all the comments from both okay. boards. And, and Beta um, had some provide, comments too as well. Yeah, uh, one yeah so the buffer zone disturbance, uh, typically what we look for, um, you know, if the commission is looking to allow disturbance in the mm -hmm. buffer zone is for mitigation. So, you know, a portion of the property being set aside for open space, you know, mm -hmm. this mitigation, the trails, another form of mitigation, the movement of the pavement, you know, within the arrays, um, you know, we, we look at that as a source of mitigation okay. as well. Uh, and then obviously, you know, if you can get the road um, reduced in size and not as extensive, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, I think that's something that we look for as well. And then those are my comments. I'll open it up to the other commission members for their you know, questions and comments as well. Was the road paved? Is it a paved or is it a... The, the so the, the, um, let me show you on here. Oh. This pretty much shows all the pavement. So this is the property line up through here. So this is an existing driveway. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be utilizing this existing paved driveway, which brings us up to essentially the start of the solar array property. And this is what is paved right now. Um, we're going to we're looking to remove. Um, yeah, I was wondering about the proposed road that goes all. Oh, the, no, the that's road. Uh, that's going to be great. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So this, I mean, as designed, but we'll look into removing more of this pavement up through here. This was all going to be remain as pavement, and this is all going to be gravel driveway in this darker hatched area up through here. The 28 acres that's being cleared, is that on the total project or just what's in the buffer zone? No, that's the entire project. How much is in the buffer zone? In the buffer the zone? Let me grab that right here. Oh, there it is up there. Yeah, I did a, uh, uh, at Don's request, we kind of did a bro breakdown of uh, existing and proposed buffer zone disturbances. Okay. Well, anyway, it's up there. It's approximately, uh, so BVW buffer zone is about 88,000 square feet. Okay. And. So this is what they submitted correct. originally. And then typically, it, if there's um, existing disturbance like the road, you know, so 
they broke it down those numbers further into what is um, previously disturbed and you know what is undisturbed. Yes. So total buffer zone to an isolated wetland, which is uh, which we identified in the corners of the property. It's about thirty-three thousand square feet, and then total buffer zone disturbance within uh, or work within the buffer zone is about 80 call it 89,000 square feet to the BVW to, uh, to from buffer zone to the BVW so of that um, of that so for this number right here so of that 33,000 there's approximately uh, you know 8,288 square feet of existing buffer zone disturbance and I define that as you know the limits of the existing tree line Obviously, if you go back to when this building was built, I believe in the 60s, there was probably much more disturbance, and there you know, was the filling of the wetland and the installation of the uh, um, culvert between the two BBWs. But um, you know, as we go down through here, the existing disturbance in that in the uh, buffer zone to the bordering vegetative wetland is about 56,000 square feet, and that's mostly around the test track area. Um, buffer zone for, the, for that, you know, when that was installed and how it was maintained. So there's a significant amount of existing buffer zone disturbance, which you know, is detailed um, through this breakdown. And I think we're going to be able to improve our numbers, you know, if we can get, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a large portion of that driveway that goes around the isolated wetland, uh, we'll be able to limit our buffer zone disturbance even, uh, even more. stopping you from developing the rest of it? Like it just seems like there's so much property. I'm wondering why you're all squeezing it there. Uh, you mean, I'm sorry. Is I think it she's question? asking why are you not developing this? Um, I think is what she's mm -hmm. asking. Is that, is that a question? So, I'm just asking, yeah. Um, well, one thing is that this is pretty much the size of the project that where the project become financially feasible. So. We could go even larger to make more money, but there's really no a point. And uh, of all the projects that I've developed in Seaworth, so I'm committed to donate a portion of, of, of new space. So I want to maintain the 60%. Okay. Okay. Most of the projects we see, they're squeezed in all this thing, and that's why they're not like, buffer disturbance. <laughs> this one, you guys seem like you backed yourself into the corner. Just curious, that's all. Well, I, I, I think I'm thinking of the road. I'm thinking about the fence that's on the outside of the road, and I can't mm -hmm. understand all of the markings, but it looks like there might be electrical wires, maybe, that run outside of the fence. Then I see. So those I lines. I see these two <laughs> lines here. So this is uh, the purple one, the purplish one, the uh, erosion control line. And then this is going to be the fence line. So the erosion control line is beyond the fence line because we have to clear beyond right. the limit of the fencing to, so that so, the, the panels aren't shaded. So this is you know, way out, and that would be closer. But it looks like we're coming really close to the 50 in a lot of these sections around the wetlands. We are with And given clearing, that there is yes. land here. Couldn't this be shrunk and expanded here, and then we're encouraging less on the wetlands, and you're not losing your panels? Well, if we, in, in, you know, you start doing and then that, you fit the road in, and correct. But then, you know, if you then you start, and we, it wasn't delineated, but you know, there's a likely a wetland up well, sure. along this area right here. Right now, we're about 150 feet away from the edge of the pond. Um, you know, with our clearing limit up through this area. So if we push yeah. further out this way, we're just going to be in the buffer zone of one the, that's not marked on the map right? of, of the pond. Yeah, that, that is correct. You know, um, so, you know, and, you know, these are isolated wetlands, you know, so the, the buffer zones, you know, local and right. this, this is, you know, um, you know, wetlands protection act, you know, buffer zone area that would be associated with this, with this pond. Right. I, I just the lines that are getting closer to the 50 mm -hmm. and you know, make me wonder about the road and the we fence. understand and the goal is to keep the project as 
compact as possible. I mean, it, it looks like it's kind of spread out all over the place, but you know, we're doing our best to keep any infrastructure and panels outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. And you know, this will allow us to keep a larger contiguous parcel to be, you know, left in open space around the pond because there are valuable trails, walking trails that do exist around the pond. So that was the, the goal of keeping everything located in this area. Of course, those trails get a lot less valuable when you're looking at a bunch of solar panels mm -hmm. 20 feet through the trees. This, this tree I mean, it's still nice to have a trail, but... Yeah. It's true, but, like, you know, the, the goal over here is that, like I said, Lily pretty much was not aware of this, and they right. were actually... And, and they don't have any rights to it anyway, so exactly. I like that you're offering. I, mean, I just, mm -hmm. in truth, the word valuable in the valuable trails. <laughs> well, I believe that I believe, I believe the abutters would find those trails valuable. Who, who use those trails on, uh, you know, to watch their dogs and um, you know wouldn't have proper access where they're not technically trespassing anymore would be, would be of value to them. Apparently, hunting. Yeah, and hunting. Yeah, I mean, so hopefully we'll see. Yes, we just, so, I ran into a hunter when I was out there. Oh, did you? Yes. yes. So a couple. Uh, just a couple of points here. Mm -hmm. So this uh, resource area wasn't flagged near the pond. The, yeah, the pond. Correct. As part of the uh, the red. Um, pardon me. As part of the uh, our red, that was not part of the scope of the red. Okay. Um, you know, my sense is because the arrays are getting fairly close to that area, and to Matt's point, I think that that's something that. We probably should get um, identified as part of the project. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. The second question I had for you is this paved area for the existing Liberty Mutual facility where there's parking, is there the ability to utilize the carport type arrays in the parking area over here, you know, to replace some of these areas of the array where we're, you know, getting close to the buffer zones, mm -hmm. I guess would be a question. Well, I think, yeah, one, so we looked into the carport, um, the, the north portion of this building over here, would is not feasible for carport because of shading. Okay. So the portion that we will be utilizing will be like over here. Mm -hmm. But the amount of square footage that you need to put, a, the amount of square footage you need to put solar into a carport is a lot less than grandma. So we'll be, what what it means is that we will be locating more panel. You know, we're only going to be reducing the solar rate, but like this square over here, or maybe less, just by allocating carport over here. Okay. All right, so that would be something to include in your alternatives analysis mm -hmm. for us, you know, so that we can take a look at that. Um, so those if, the, if they do the wetlands delineation around the pond, we can see if there is some shifting available mm -hmm. to get away from the upper, the northwest corner. Right, yeah, that's a good point. Um, okay. All right, sorry to interrupt. Uh, were there any other questions or comments from the commission? I'll just make my usual comment that I think cutting down woodlands to put up solar panels is not a particularly viable approach, in my humble opinion. And getting into buffer zones is a thing I have a problem with. Okay. All right, questions or comments from the audience at this point? Still early in the project, but yes, sir. Can we just get your name and address, please? I'm Maury Gasser, 28 South Mill Street. I'm president of HALT. And I I just like I need to say something because I did send a letter to the yep. about our concerns. Uh, and that was before I talked to uh, Mr. Rodriguez here. And uh, I think it's possible that we could come to a, an agreement on, on how the race should be configured and what concessions can be done. Uh, what wasn't mentioned here was uh, some planting of screening between the array and, and, and the trail, so it might be less visible. Uh, I was disturbed with the comment about move the move the array closer to the pond. Uh, we want to preserve as much contiguous open space in a, in a solid block as possible because the woods experience of walking in a trail is already going to be compromised. We can't avoid that. Uh, but 
trying to minimize that. So I'm hopeful that uh, we can come to a to a, an agreement. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the audience? Yes, ma'am. Trees won't be sucking up the water anymore. We already have an issue with the sump pumps. So please. So you're on the map. <coughs> this area through here? Or? Yep, the, to the left of that. Right here? Right there. Yep, right there. So we're kind of like, it all, it's all a hill. <laughs> okay. So I just get concerned. Okay. So are you that water? this property here or the yeah, one further yeah, down? Right there. Right here? Yep. Okay. Not the um, one in the back, but the one down <laughs> to the street, right in front of the street. So based on the the way the existing topography goes, there's a there's a small portion, you know, which essentially is running of this site, which is running towards your property. So when I did the, you know, my stormwater analysis, I specifically looked at, you know, this what's going towards, you know, your property line, just so we can make sure that we're identifying if there's any concerns and how much water is running off towards your property. So you know, we are proposing a stormwater basin in this area right through here to collect any of the stormwater runoff that's coming from uh, this small cleared area up through here. But you know, the, the, the cleared area that's going to be draining towards your property is gonna be minimal up through this area. So we're gonna have this small cleared area and the uh, gravel driveway. So what we have is a, uh, a graded gravel swale, which is starting in this area. It's running all the way down to the pond and it's collecting that water that's running off the, the land prior to it getting to your property line. So down right through here. Well, there is a wetland which so we we identify the wetland in this area right through here, you know, based on, you know, current town and GIS mapping, you know, that wetland does appear to extend out through this area, so you know, there's no question that part of your yard is wet. It is uh, an identified wetland. Um, so we're also installing a pond, a small stormwater basin in this area too with the swale. So we're trying to collect any water that's kind of coming down that property line. We're going to direct it towards the stormwater basin and then that's going to outlet towards this wetland out through here. The water's still going to go towards the wetland, but we're going to slow it down and release it at a controlled rate so it's not increasing the amount of flow which is going yeah. towards your property. I don't think we can handle an increase as far as mm -hmm. our house, well, our basements. Right? Mm -hmm. But a majority of the site, like as far as the site grading, you know, this 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 little area right through here is what essentially feeds this this isolated mm -hmm. wetland. You know, where a large portion of the ray is, that all that water goes towards this large wetland which then drains into the pond so a majority you know, so this whole area essentially up through here you know the existing site all this area you know is all draining towards that pond whether it goes to the wetland first and then then to the pond or it flows directly into the pond so most of the water from this site isn't reaching your property. I understand that your property is likely wet because you do have a wetland identified in this area right through here. Um, but we're not, you know, based on the, the calculations provided to the town and the, the design measures we are implementing with the swales and stormwater basins, there should be no increase towards your property. We have beta engineering which is contracted by the town that does a peer review of their calculation and the study and the swales and the engineering controls that they put in. So uh, they're in the process of reviewing um, the engineering design as well 
and have provided comments to these folks. So that's part of the, the process as well. Any other questions from the audience? Mm -hmm. Yep, just can we get your name and address, please? Yep. Uh, Steve Gordon, 65 Franklin Road. So that's uh, my property is at the top of the hill there, right? Okay. Um, and their property was down at the bottom there where it's wetter. Yeah. But up top there, yeah, on the right, right? By that pool there, that's your pool there. Right? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's down there. Oh, so okay. It's really wet, and I would assume that by taking all those trees down, we just got more water go in that direction. See, so, yeah. it's essentially the this same thing I said to the previous right. comment. So that there's really a, a, a small area which drains to this isolated wetland. There is an area that does drain to it, but you know, for the most part, it's a, a very small, a very right. small there area. Is, there is a lot of water that Correct. does come down to it. They don't show that much on there, but there's mm -hmm. from that isolated wetland on the top that comes down to the other one. There's quite a bit of water that flows through there. Um, and it is wet for a good part of the year. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, just in the winter or the springtime there. Uh, okay. But my question is more about the being able to leave trees along those um, property lines, or is those trees, you cut those trees down all the way to the edge of that property? No, we're, there, there, there's going to be, we're going to remain, uh, I believe it's a 75 foot buffer at least minimum through, through so this area right through here. Marks or, uh, yeah, that purple mark is the edge of clearing. Yeah, this so doesn't have like a key, so maybe you can explain to them what the erosion control is. Sure, no, no problem. Well, that can't be 75 feet to the edge of the property line, is it? Or is that what that is, 75 no. feet? I'm like right from, there. From here, right through here? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. that, That's 100, the plans, this plan's at 120 scale. Okay. So it's you know, 120 feet per inch. But from which line? Yeah, this is the property line. Yeah, this is the well, if your bar scale is correct, it's nowhere near 120 feet. If I would say it's 50. Which sheet are you going to? Uh, let's see. This is barely. I think two, two <laughs> five. This is not 120 feet. No, if you said it was 75. Because that's only 50 between here and there. Right? So, so I just have one more question. Yeah, no problem. So that can't that be said. Property. Property. Oh, right. It's at 75. It's not 50 feet. Yeah, okay. so it's not even the wetlands, or how do you get to do that, too? the solar array there. Like, are you able to go through the wetlands in order to build this, or? No, we don't have to cross or impact any wetlands to, to get to those areas. So just to, just to reiterate, at, at, at the closest point, there's about 43 feet, and that's in this area right through here. We can, we can work on that. And then for the most part, this area up through here, we, we, we did our best to maintain at least 75 feet up through here. But we'll be working with the planning board on that. So it does pinch down by this um, right here. You can, if you want to come up here, by you can show By this little area right through here. That's correct. Um, so yeah, right, right in this area right through here, we're about 43 feet from the edge of uh, where we're clearing. But you can see it does, it, it, and then it kind of just follows this little path right up through here um, where the edge of clearing is. So it, at its tightest point, 43, but we are, um, you know, as you go over towards the pond, you're about 75 feet. And we can work with you on that if you want to see a, a certain value, you want to see 75 throughout the whole length, you know, we can be more than happy to work with you. Um, Thank you. Yes, sir. Eric Rosenblum, Tim I just had a question on the, on the uh, gas easement work that they're going to start in the next year or two. And in conjunction with the construction expectation start date of this project, you know, it seems like there's going to be a lot of disruption to that same area that's uh, running through the wetland down the middle of the project, uh, digging up to the 12-inch pipe that's going on. So are you going to dig at one time, or is it going to be multiple cuts? Uh, so, it? so as far as the Eversource project goes, we're not affiliated with Eversource. They're going to be working within their allowed easement, and they, I believe they've received the permit through the Conservation Commission mm -hmm. late last year. Um, so that that's for work through here, and I believe there are some wetland impacts. Um, 
Go we're, all the way we're, through, all the way through. Yeah, it goes all the way. It does, it does go all the way through, but where the wetlands are is in this area right through here. Yeah. And, you know, we're obligated to maintain this corridor for the utility. So, you know, we're not going to be doing any major work. Uh, we're still working with National Grid to see what type of fencing they're going to allow, as Pedro oh, sure. described earlier. Yeah. Um, you know, whether they're going to require us to fence this south portion of the array as one fenced-in area and fence in this northern portion as a separate fenced-in area and leave this corridor. You know, we're going to do whatever they you know, want us to do at that point. And uh, as I described before, we're going to look to work with the fire department to minimize our gravel roadway. So we're hoping to be able to remove this section of roadway that crosses the easement and then just have one driveway crossing located in that area. So we're trying to you know, keep the disturbance to that transmission easement you know, as minimal as possible. And we don't want to have our workers on top of you know, high pressure gas line. So there's going to be coordination <laughs> with the utility, um, you know, whenever any digging is done on the site. Um, yeah. Don, we haven't gotten a construction schedule from Eversource. We have a construction Good. sequence, I think, in the NLI. Yeah, the yeah, Ashland denied the project. Yeah, I saw that. So I think <laughs> so the whole thing up. may be delayed okay. based on that. Okay. Yeah, we yeah, so Ashland denied the Eversource um, notice of intent. So to Matt's point, um, we're not certain of this, but we think the project's on hold for right now. Yeah, so, um, you know, I don't know what, I don't know, it, it, the construction schedule for these guys depends on when they get all their permits in place and that type of thing. Um, so it's kind of tough really to say. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions? Mr. Chairman, I have one yeah. more question. Yes. You say there's 28 acres for the site. Is that 28 acres of solar panels or is that 28 acres including the roadway and fencing and so forth? Disturbance. So all the way up to the required trees to be cut to okay. not shade the panels. So that's the Everything. total footprint disturbance, land disturbance. Thank you. We should be getting a buffer zone analysis, you know, so they can show for the site how much is wooded, how much. Uh, yeah, we don't have that already. You know, it's part of the alternatives analysis. So yeah, you're getting more information. Right, with the alternatives analysis. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. Be, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll do a well. whole plan color that kind of describes pre-existing. You know, that breaks down yeah, the areas yep. we calculated. So yeah, that will be uh, working in, working that in too. Okay. So I think we're good for now. Um, still some work cut out for us. Can I make one statement? Yeah. So if there's any other neighbors that would like to talk to Pedro and myself after the meeting, we'd be more than happy to meet with you guys, give us, you know, take your information and meet with you and discuss any you know, planting or clearing limits or anything, any other questions that you would have on the project. Where like the area out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, outside. Yeah, we don't want to disturb the meeting. <laughs> There's a couch out there. So you can yeah. That. But, um, yeah, so we'll be looking to, you know, get every, all the responses in writing um, within probably not the next meeting. So you want to shoot for the 25th? Yeah, I think that's that's a safe bet. Hopefully we can coordinate with Beta and get all their comments addressed too. And if for some reason we can't make it, we'll notify you guys. But we'll do our best to... Uh, Get everything we need two weeks two weeks before for revised so materials. You get, the more okay. you get the communication going back and forth. Okay. Yeah. Um, so right now we'll pencil in. Might take continue to the twenty fifth. Yep. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Thank you, you very much. Here you go, Pedro. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I got to zoom in for the clothes.
Just Google cemeteries with Star, Star of David, William the, uh, Cemetery. Yeah. 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 This is the yeah. 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 request for reconsideration. Yeah. 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 Oh, I just found it. So it just, is that the list? Hopefully, I think it's any coincidence that every single one of those fives and men whatever. Just kind of keep it separate. It looks like those are. Yeah, but then besides something, then if you go over five, it's a little bit more. That's pretty far out. It's changed up. Nine, so the solar uh, 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 cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's Google Maps. It's Google Maps. This guy is like, he's a star. People Google Maps. Google Maps is the key. I know, I know. And then if you need property lines and stuff, they go to the last. Yeah, yeah, just one of these to figure out what's going before each kind of redesign too much. Design. And they've updated all the errors too for a while. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, Mr. Petrosi, step right up. <laughs> Big project. Yes, so. So uh, tonight, um, I don't know if you want to open the hearings or not, but. Uh, since I was last here, uh, here with the commission, we've had several uh, discussions with the town um, regarding this property and the existing uh, current state of affairs with regards to litigation. Um, and it, during the last uh, conversation that we had, there was some discussion about how to um, resolve the flooding problem on our property and still allow us to develop uh, um, some of the property that we had. So originally uh, this is the proposal that's currently in front of the commission which is four lots construction of Buckland Street and as part of our mitigation or settlement with the town we would propose to drain this water through a pipe system out to Pleasant Street, which um, would solve the problem of the water that's being dumped on our property now to not further flood down, down gradient. So uh, that was the first alternative that we suggested and then following uh, discussions later on, we came up with an alternative scenario, which would be to ultimately abandon the proposed construction of Buckland Street and construct three houses uh, with access from Leonard Street. And what would essentially happen, the water would still be gathered up in this ponding area that's currently there and piped to a, another basin adjacent to the first lot and then piped out to the uh, existing drainage on Pleasant Street. Um, this felt was um, we would push all the, any of the buildings that would be outside the 50-foot uh, buffer area. <laughs> and would eliminate the need for constructing this roadway and this detention basin that is uh, proposed under this scenario. So um, and we're here tonight to basically get some feedback from the commission to see if we can proceed with uh, we're more than happy to develop the three lots as we talked about at the last uh, conversation and um, resolve our differences with the town relative to the drainage that's um, going onto the property. Okay, and just for the benefit of the audience um, that may be watching from home, this is an overview of the entire project we're looking at here that. Um, Includes uh, all six of the filings that Mr. Petrosi has before us now. Right. So, okay. 
Um, and of course, this under either scenario, we would meet all the stormwater management regulations um, for the water to be discharged off the site. And this will, in a lot of ways, this will alleviate um, the water that's affecting these properties down down gradient because this will be bermed up around here and then it actually will become a little bit of a ponding area and then discharged after it gets to a certain uh, it would act as a, a basin but we're not calling it a stormwater basin the water's essentially going there now I think we have that plan though. yeah though this is this plan is the, current, the one that's current pending for oh, you Street? haven't submitted it to us oh yeah no no you have I got well, this is uh, HC 33 I got the most recent one revised February 21st. Yeah. Uh, of what? Yeah. 2019. <laughs> no, you, you should have. Uh, well, this is January well, this 6, 2020. Old. Okay, he did this. He did this plan as part of uh, our discussion. Oh yeah. Uh, our this, yeah. So January 6. Yeah, I get. So. I get your alternative. So this hasn't. This hasn't been. Not neither one of these have been submitted to the commission as a. Official part of the oh, I'm sorry. Not okay. part of the record. So when you submitted that, I, this one, I I had. So you didn't want yeah, that. I, part I, of the I uh, no. The, what I submit, I submitted this just for to get for conversation with the DPW and feedback. For, oh, I you thought know, you were going to present it at this meeting, so I put it in the file. Okay. You want me to take it out? It's yeah, just, it's not yeah. part of any filing at this point. Okay. So it's just an informal discussion. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. Yeah. I just want. Uh, I think I'll, for tonight. I'll take them out of the file. Okay. But tonight, you know, if we, if the commission feels that this is an improvement, then what we would do is we'd amend our filings or refile this uh, file this plan, um, and um, go forward with this plan as opposed to the four lot project that we previously had on the table. Okay, and so so just we're not plugging up the inlet coming in from no. or the outlet excuse me the outfall so that's going to be allowed to stay so we don't have to worry about stormwater getting backed up in right. this portion of the property by plugging that which was one of the original thoughts thoughts that you had proposed so that's, well, that's uh, from that perspective you know in my mind that's, that's definitely that's an improvement um, the reduction to the three lots is an improvement um, but, uh, you know, I want to open it up to the other commission members. I kind of gave you my feedback when we had our meeting with the, um, with the town. Um, and I just want, you know, these folks to give you, uh, you know, their thoughts on, um, on how they feel about it. So, pass it down. So, I have a question. Um, item four on our agenda, HCC 39. That is. HC 39 was the so one we were going to block it. We were going to block the pipe. That's not going to. That would go. That? that would go away under this proposal. Okay, so right now it's still in place. Right. The well, second question. You said um, if you can go back, take that off from the yellow. So your blue line depicts a drainage or something. Yes. A pipe. Yeah, a pipe. And you said it's going to the existing drainage on Pleasant Street. What exactly do you mean by the existing well, drainage? Well, uh, there's a catch basin yeah. that's in Pleasant Street that we would uh, install. You know, we'd do some modifications here to create a catch basin, I mean a uh, drain manhole, and then a new catch yeah. basin. That That's an existing 12-inch um, drainage that's in Pleasant Street right now. Do you know where the... Where does that go? Where's the outfall of that? It's, it all ends up in the same spot. It's just a different, I don't exactly know the name of the well, location. Well, I mean, coming from there, going to there, going to someplace else. Well, this all goes in the same direction. It's, it's, this, it would be tied into the existing no, infrastructure. I get, I get that, but the volume of water coming from there is going to someplace new now. Right. So, so just for a little bit of background, Jim, um, 
John Westerling was at the town meeting when Mr. Petrosi had proposed this. Um, he, in theory, and Don, correct me if I'm wrong, Don was there as well, seemed to be, um, it seemed to me that this was something that he was amenable to, subject to, you know, ensuring that the engineering, you know, that Mr. Petrosi presents the engineering for how he's going to tie it in and that the existing system can handle the additional flow coming from the site. So that, the, you know, the engineering and the details of that still need to be reviewed by John, but... And the town engineer. And the town engineer. Um, but, you know, in theory, you know, it's, he was um, amenable to, to uh, you know, this proposal of tying into that Pleasant Street infrastructure. Okay, but the proposal is to take a volume of water, whatever that is, we don't know yet. We may never know, a volume of water from over there off of Leonard Street and convey it over to Pleasant Street and dump it into the uh, system on Pleasant Street, which is then going someplace else. It might be going to, it might be on it, the it, same It subject. ends up in the same spot, it's just going there through a pipe this way instead of over land this way. So this it's goes not down in at all now. This is yeah, this is going across these people's properties and into another drain system that's on uh, Maple Street extension and some of it goes on to Mr. Terry's property. Is it true? That's what we've heard from those neighbors. Yeah. 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 So lots of water. If you um, down in this direction, so this water here currently flows this way here. Yeah. There's it goes in here and then there's a pipe. But not all of it though. Right. Well, I don't. What do you mean all of it? Some of it goes to Mr. Terry's property. You know, but some of it majority stays pool where it is. It yeah, spreads out. Right. But, well, but there's, actually, there's, there's nothing there now. It's just undeveloped. You know, isolated vegetated wetlands. It's undeveloped, and there's a lot of sheet surface flow that ends up, you know, on various different properties, um, downgrading it from the site. From here. Or from this entire site? From, from the entire site. Well, let's, let's get this. From the so, entire area. From the entire area. So, this, what's, what's been added to the problem is the development upstream of this. This is overindulged the, the mm -hmm. water that's going on to our property. And now it's, it's sheet flowing or flowing in this direction here and along Mr. Terry, down to Mr. Terry. So, this water currently goes across. Conley's property through through uh, uh, a, a channel that's in here that is a culvert that goes underneath Maple Street extension and it goes down a drainage ditch that discharges down past the bike trail that's yeah. way down here. Now this drainage goes down Pleasant Street to Main Street to the same location. So the water's getting to the same spot, it's just going there in a different route. Both of these scenarios, though, are okay. proposing the same connection. Correct. So either way, yeah, it's that's right. No, between I'm just one and the other, it's, it's, the, it's they're both connecting. The, this this development can't possibly be this this has okay. more surface runoff, as you can see, is right. and stuff. Yeah, but you have a. Well, we have a detention basin. This proposal takes whatever the existing water is there and holds it and okay. takes it out. So, do the chair can I ask a few questions? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, can you explain, like, on this proposed one, what you plan to do with the roads? Are the paper roads? Are, are oh, the, the what's going to be paid? What's going to where the utilities get like? So uh, the paper street is is owned by Wall Street. We have the rights in the paper street, and we would abandon the rights in that paper street, and this would essentially become a utility easement, like probably maybe 15 or 20 feet wide for the utility. So we would still be bringing in water and sewer in this direction. And Into the houses? Huh? So does that become like part of their backyards now instead yeah, of this, the Yeah, this becomes back part of their backyard. Okay. Yeah. We would, these, this area here gets combined with the, the rest of the land and becomes part of their backyard. So all the utilities that go out to Pleasant Street, they'd be like under grass? Underground, yeah. 
Like the undergrass, you're not going to pave it. You're not gonna no, no, like no, no pavement. No, no, no pavement. This is all, um, you know, this would be loomed and seeded. Um, and then area. Leonard Street, are you going to have to improve that? Leonard Street would be improved with pavement up to uh, approximately here. We have to, uh, if we proceed with this, we'd have to sit with the fire department to make sure to see what they want. Usually they want the way to be paved 20 feet wide for access, and then we'd have to try and accommodate a turning, uh, hammerhead turn for them to turn around. Uh, and I, don't, I don't know what they do now, but... Would that become public, or would you still, no, still maintain private. it as private, yeah, like a homeowners association? Uh, it could be. Right now, uh, I don't know who, uh, but there are t there's a home down here and there's a home here. I don't know who plows their road now, but it's somebody's doing it. And um, did you consider shared driveways? Well, this is. It looks is, like three separate, right? This is this is actually considered a shared driveway. We just split it with the lot line. Okay. Um, there was a thought about um, trying to uh, get uh, another, you know, driveway going through. For but that would require a special permit and another process. So with this proposal, Mr. Petruzzi. With the three, is all the structure outside of the 50 foot? Yes. Okay. And um, how, so it's outside of the 50, but inside the 100. Inside the 100, all three of them, correct? Right. This is, this is the uh, 100 right here. So, so some, you know, part of the buildings will be outside the 100, but. Um, it looks like half, lots. half, and yeah, half. Whole. These these two lots would be. Uh, the and then that here. one's completely in the hundred. Mm -hmm. This one here is completely in the hundred. Yeah. We're talking delineation. We should talk about yeah the request to uh, extend that delineation. Yeah. So the ORAD is up. Uh, is that expiring? Is that well, the, it did expire, it but expired. you folks, uh, we made the request prior to the right. expiration, so you. Right. Felt that I had met the correct. The, okay, uh, I apologize. That's correct. No, um, but, uh, so the comment that I think it's Matt, expired, and then you guys would consider issuing an extension if it met if, if the wetland delineation had not changed. <coughs> so well, if it, no, first you wanted it reflagged, so we reflagged it, and then I don't know if you went out and did the site. Yes, yeah, so I think Matt did check it and has some. Uh, concerns about the flagging and sent it to Paul back in November and we haven't heard back from Paul on yeah. Matt's comments regarding yeah so, so there are a couple of things that went on um, <clears throat> one was um, flag a24 right here yeah that that in that particular area the flags that were put up in the field did not really match what is shown on the plan. So okay. either the, the flags were somehow put back wrong or the original survey was wrong. Mm -hmm. There's something going on in that area that I think warrants further investigation as far as the location. Of the as far flag. as what the, 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 the flagging that's shown on that plan that that matches what was originally flagged. Okay. Then separate from that I think that boundary currently is no longer accurate. I think the wetlands a little bit larger along that whole edge. Unfortunately, closer closer north. to where those houses are, yeah, to the north. north. Right. That that would make our point that uh, the water is making the property uh, okay. irreparably harmed, as they call it, in the legal. Yeah, so, so I, when I had gone out there and I, I had hung some flags out there, and then I had sent an email um, to EchoTech. <laughs> To alert them, and I don't know if it's a, I don't know yeah. if you ever got in touch with you about it or not. But uh, that hasn't been resolved, and I think probably before this goes too much further, I think that probably should be resolved, so that at least the existing conditions are all kind of nailed down, so that your design can be based on. Yeah, yeah uh, I, and absolutely, just stop for one second. Absolutely, because that's going to change. You know the impact of the buffer zone is going to potentially change how much of the structure is you know between the 50 and 100, and potentially part of the structure may be within the 50. If that 
right, but delineation it, it, is um, is moving further north. Yeah. Isn't it uh, though? The, the wetland line is locked in for three years from the date of the final order. So, regardless of, I mean, I don't want to get into the legalities of whether or not you've the drainage has made more wetlands on the property, which would prove our point of damages. But we'd rather just deal with the fact that we have an existing notice of intent that's been pending and the line is locked in for three years from the date of the order. We have an issue so, in the line. Right, so it's still locked in. That's what, what I'm, my point is that it's, we're dealing with a wetland line that is still um, still valid. Um, but I, I certainly will have Paul contact you. You can go out there and take a look. And yeah, I, I think even just setting aside whether the wetland lines moved or not, the issue of potentially a survey mm -hmm. error, I think, is would kind of supersede. Sure. You know the legalities of what was approved when and how long. Oh it yeah. yeah. I, I, my so purpose is not to get into that kind of discussion yeah. tonight. We're here to uh, try and uh, come to so some sort of an understanding that this is more preferable than the previous plan that we had on the table, and it is a way of um, sort of settling all our differences um, with regard to the drainage on the property, benefits the people downstream and adjacent properties, um, and it helps the whole situation. Uh, totally. So that's um, kind of what we think works. Can uh, check, uh, excuse me? Can I ask a couple more questions? Sure. So I, I do I like the design of the three houses. That seems to be a little bit more amenable, especially if you don't have that Buckland Street actually. You can right. push things back if you want to. But what I don't understand, and I, I've never agreed with um, um. basically turning the the wetland into like a stormwater basin because they're basically converting it to a stormwater BMP. So I guess like what was the idea? I don't understand like what that outlet structure is going to be in the piping. Why well, wouldn't you just pipe it from Leonard well, we directly have to, to Buckland? We have to comply. We we're trying to comply with stormwater management and the concern is that if the water flows down into Pleasant Street that the Pleasant Street uh, system will not be sized properly to handle the additional flow. So um, even even though this is, um, it's going to act as a detention, but it's actually going to just be a, a, an isolated wetland that will hold water for a longer period of time than just topping over and just <coughs> uh, sheet flowing. I guess I'm these, just these here are meant to comply with the regulations to not increase the rate of, I mean, you can do a lot of things to not increase the rate, and this—I I don't know how the city DPW would even um, maintain that. So who's going to maintain it? Well, it doesn't. Know. Who's maintaining it now? It's a natural system right now. Well, theoretically. right, and it would continue to be a natural system. No, it doesn't. Not once you put an outlet structure on it, that, and like you have, like you got a pipe, you got a man-made. There's no road there, so how is any truck even going to get there to maintain that pipe that they need to? Like, so the, the, it's just the, not a maintainable system. So there's driveways and there's driveways to. Yeah, but those are all private. And it's a public now, it's a public so, system. So let's just back up just a little bit. Right now, the water is going there. Water is going into that area. Water is going there now. Yeah, We're I, get that. Like I have drop. a PE after my name usually, so oh. I understand all that. Oh. I'm just saying, I don't I, know it's if it's D, very viable. I'm not a P. Yeah. So the water is going understand. there now. And, I, and I, you raised a question before about, about a drainage easement or a drainage basin. We're simply just saying, look, at the water is going there now. We don't like it going there. We prefer it not to go there, but we're trying to find a, a happy uh, balance here about we'll let you keep the water going there, but we need to guess, do some um, other things. You know, I, I, I personally, I know the other commissioners have a different opinion, but like, I mean, I think that it would be fine having a separate stormwater system versus the natural overland flow and the and the wetland will change sizes and stuff like that. But the way this is proposed, what, I don't what, uh, know why the DPW would, I, I do know why they would take it, but it, it's going to be very difficult to maintain. I, well, I really don't think that there's much maintenance to be done. I mean, this is... A naturally vegetated. I get vegetated. these calls all the time. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. I get calls like this all the time. Well, you do for like um, man-made detention basins. You'd have 
But as soon uh, as there's a pipe, somebody's going to think that the, the town's responsible for it. So I, I'm, I'm amenable to this. I think the design's better. Um, I just, you know, once that the stormwater, the stormwater um, system design, I'd like to see in more detail. If you, if you have an idea that would help us, uh, <laughs> then. I honestly, I honestly don't have a problem with piping it from just from Leonard. If yeah, the elevations ask? work to Buckland, all underground, in an easement, underneath the driveway. So just to buy, to just buy, what, how would we hold the water? Can I, we so ask her a question? Sure. Why are you not going from here? Straight over there. Right, yeah, Which, that's what I'm saying. Why is why you why don't cut out the middleman here and okay. just go straight so across? Originally, our original Too plan, much flow. Original plan Too did much have flow. that, but the question is flow. If the water is going there unaltered uh, and sort of like delayed, we're concerned that this tw this is just a 12-inch pipe would be not adequate to handle the additional flow. So that's why we're doing it. It's just simply to comply with the... Who, and who decided that? Yeah, like there should be some counts. Who decided we're gonna that? Do, we're going to do some counts. <laughs> I mean, if, if that's... That's a small area. Listen, that's, it, that's kind of an easier fix and he's, for it's me. Easier for you. Easier it's fix. easier for the so, city, the town to maintain. But it's... it's and we'll you know certainly consider that after we do the calculations, so, the drainage calculations for that. Mm -hmm. um, I got a follow-up question. I can't see that far, but what's the elevation here? The inland elevation. Oh, you got to ask me that. <laughs> That's 506. It looks like 506, 507, 508. What are these elevations here? These are. This is 508, 509. It, go, it goes up that way, and it's a sheet. It goes the, the down gradient is this way here. Yeah, so now it's going here. So now it's now it's going to go here. It's going right. to get collected here, and, and it's going to discharge. It's going to collect there. Yeah. And then it's going to pipe. Somebody's going to calculate the difference between this and this because it intuitively. It, I right. They're going to agree. That should just be like overflow. We, we did a drainage it's study. Not it's draining it. We we did yeah, a drainage wow. report good. previously that was you know for this site to design this detention basin here. So instead of that, and instead of the water going to Terry's side. The water is going to be captured here or held here. Which it is now. No, anyway. right now. No, it, right now, <laughs> it's controlled. It's going to be captured mm -hmm. here and controlled, and then discharged out in a different in a direction towards Pleasant Street through a pipe system. So, will somebody be doing those calculations? Oh, yeah. Of the flow from that versus the flow right from Leonard Street. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the town the town's not going to approve the connection if it's not engineered. You know, if the engineering hasn't been vetted out and the system is, if, if the system's shown that it can't handle the flow, they're not going to allow it. Right. Yeah. The, the, the purpose to, the, the purpose tonight is to get the commission's um, blessings, I guess. Well, we, we can't give you any blessings. We can, I guess, what we can tell you is just say, well, it's, it's better than what. Yeah. We're so this is an improvement over mm -hmm. the four lot plan. Um, my sense, you know, from my perspective, um, you know, the how you're handling the drainage seems to me that um, you know it's something that I think could work if the town agrees to it. Um, you know, depending on how this new delineation is going to look when we get the survey squared away, um, you know, I'm still of the mind that, you know, I'd like to see two houses, not three. I know. I'd like to want to see five. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we're, we're all like have the, um, yeah, our so preferences. That, that, so. That's my feedback. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, and I would say it's 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 an improvement. I, I do have a question. What's the distance from here to here? Uh, it's one inch equals. So this was a thirty foot right of way approximately. Yeah, so it's and, about and forty. So feet. my my question is, wouldn't you move scale in houses well, we'll back further? We don't want to have decks and other things for family entertainment. You, rather have them playing out here than out here when you so. I have I have no idea I'm just <laughs> saying I'm just I'm just speaking in terms yeah, no, of, no, of where the buffer zones so the, are so that's a roughly about 50 feet from the back of the house as we currently have it and what's the what's, what's the zoning requirement I think the zoning is 30 but you know, I'll have to check that I don't know for sure 
the biggest pro the difference between what see the planning board I think I mentioned to you the the planning board wanted me to make this road wider so under this scenario I would have had to push these houses further back this way mm -hmm. towards the wetland mm -hmm. in order to satisfy the yeah, planning yeah, yeah, board. Yeah, yeah, I know all that. So we talked about this. So so now we came up with this with the approach that you know Buckland Street would now become part of their backyards and that we would mess around with the location. Sure, we could possibly play around, but th this particular lot is the you know least intrusion. These two are the least mm -hmm. intrusion mm -hmm. into the into the hundred. So, um, I, I mean, we're trying. We're doing the best we can to try and make this uh, happy ending. Um, but I, you know, I do think that if we can work in the same direction, we can alleviate all this other. Uh, process for trying to stop the water from continually going there. And, and if, if, if that is the case that, you know, that this wetland increased over the last two years, that's not good for the town, I don't think, from a damage Just standpoint. Just like I say. No, no, I understand. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's fine, but that would make... Yeah, so we, we need to get that issue squared away. I think so that's... Uh, you know, priority. So I'll have uh, I'll have Paul call you, and uh, you know I think after this weekend the snow cover might be gone, mm -hmm. so you folks can take a walk out there and and um, hang a couple of flags. But I've always felt that while you're in the process, the wetland line is fixed for the period that you're in the process for. That's, uh, in fact, well, to Matt's point, let's just make yeah. sure there's, no, there's not a survey error. Yeah. Uh, so. Would if uh, if I go back to the engineers and I tell them to do the drainage report and submit a new plan to the commission, um, we would just amend the applications, the notices of intents that are pending with the commission, and maybe probably delete one for this one of these lots out back here. Yeah, it would be an amended. Notice of intent. Yeah, amended they, filing they, of yeah. sense of it, or amended plan, or whatever. Yep, I think that would make sense. Is that and, like, as long as that. We did talk okay. about notifying the abutters again, too. Um, but not re advertising, just notice them. Right. So could you get rid of like lot 4A? You don't have a 4A anymore. Yeah, no, I do. I have 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A. Three. But if you did the new one. Then I'd have. Uh, you withdraw the 4A. Withdraw the 4A. Yeah, 3A becomes 4A. And the right away. 3A, the right away. 3A and 4A get combined. Yeah, yeah. 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 get combined into one. Right. And so, so since the Leonard H Street would be improved instead of Buckland, does that just get incorporated into one of these other ones? Um, HC 33 in. would go away more than likely because that was the original Buckland Street uh, okay. construction of the roadway. HC 39 was the proposal to improve Leonard Street, so that probably would stay. As a separate? Well, I, it, okay. it just depends on what the commission wants to do. Is but I would say keep, keep it a little separate. Okay, Matt had one other comment as well, yeah. Mr. Petrosi. So just with regard to the drainage, um, I guess I'm somewhat reiterating what Carrie said. And I understand this is only under the bylaw, which is um, potentially advantageous to the applicant, because I think under the Act, we're dealing with a similar project now where we've gone through, really looked in detail some of the language in the Act about sort of what seems here is basically you're berming up around the wetland to allow it to detain the water, right? Is yeah. that essentially what it is? Yeah. So under the Act, that's clearly not allowed. It's mm -hmm. considered an impact to the wetland is not allowed. So. I guess the question would be is, is there language in the bylaw that kind of echoes that same language in the act? And I, I don't have it in front of me to, to look at. I'd, somebody would need to look at that closely to make sure that that. Is something that would be permitted under the right, bylaw. Right, it may not be permitted. I, I can tell you under the act, there's no way that that would ever get through DEP if it got through um, a CONCOM. Um, so the question is, is, does the bylaw, would the bylaw allow that? So I think at a minimum, Mr. Petrosa, you probably either need to make the case that there is nothing in the bylaw that, that forbids it as part of the drainage report mm -hmm. so that whether myself or the commissioner, Don, can, you know, look at that and either agree with it or say, 
Right. No, you can't do that, and you have to do some sort of a direct piping, you know, maybe to some other basin or something. I don't know mm -hmm. what it would be, but that's a potential. Sure. I just don't want you to go through the whole drainage design just to come back and say, well, actually, it says right here in the bylaw <laughs> that you can't do that. Yeah, that's a good point. Man. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll look at that. But this, I'll, I mean, right now it looks like it's a brown, but actually it could be, you know, we could regrade this a different way so it just you're regrading the front yard right into the, and it's just becomes blended in and just raises to a certain level. When you go yeah, it's, it. it starts so to get into a gray area right. when you start to okay. do that, so. But the driveways act as a burn. The driveway crossings would be. Well, presumably uh, they're not yeah. out at the elevation of the water below. Right, right there. Right, they built up. Yeah, they built up. This is at 508, so it's kind of almost, uh, it's almost level with the, uh, with the, Hopefully that's the existing grade. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's only, um, he only has one grade line here. It's one foot contour down to the existing grade, so. Okay, Mr. Terry, do you have any questions or comments? Yeah, just a couple of minor questions. Uh, so the frontage is going to be off of uh, Leonard Street. That's 300. You're going to need 300 feet, right? Um, we need uh, 100, 200, and maybe whatever the next driveway is. 50 feet, maybe 250 feet. So you might have to fiddle a little with your frontage. Right. To get to, get to, to, get to 300, because what do you got down here, 400? Yeah, there's five, uh, it's 500 off the front, total. Down there? Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 for the planning. Now, is too. John Westerling agreeable to, to, to pipe in from where Barberi put that street in down there that, uh, what's the name of that street? Box Mill. Box Mill. The only, the There's only a pipe thing that I, comes across from there. Right. There's a pipe that comes off from... Uh, from Box Mill. Yeah. And in front of Alex, that house that says Alex. Right. Uh, his water runs across the street. Right. And the house from here, his water runs across the street. Right. And comes into here now. Yes. And there's a girl that owns a house up here that used to be uh, Wyckoff, Betty Wyckoff's house. Yeah. And she they're in problem. litigation with the town right now because mm -hmm. they're pouring water out onto Leonard Street. And as about a year ago, year, two months ago, <coughs> they had an agreement that she would somehow get that piped out to, to Grove Street. This would alleviate her having to do that. I don't know whether that was an expensive thing for her or never got done. So that could be brought into this pipe. And well, we don't want to bring, you know, we're not going to pipe the whole neighborhood. <laughs> okay, we're not, well, no. we're not going to make this no. bigger the than what it is. The town has made so. the mistake of accepting this corner right here. Where's Box Mill, right here? No, Box Mill is right over here, right here. From, there's, a, there's a pipe that comes in yeah. right here. That's right. Ted Mayer's land is right here, right here. There's a yeah. little pipe that comes underneath the ground, yeah. comes from here to here. Yeah. And it it uh, that's that's the pipe that we're gonna that's gonna move. go over here. Well, we, we're what we're saying that is an option to go. We we did do the engineering, so it does work. Gravity to pipe this to here. So the problem is that again, from a flow standpoint, we think that the flow is will be too much for. <laughs> so <coughs> that flow would go into the wetlands. That it goes. It, that's where it goes now. And then eventually, the water would get discharged out to Pleasant Street on a. Just you just have to catch it and filter it to slow down the drainage, yeah. slow down the action, right? Right. Yeah. Remember who told you to do this in the first place? I don't know, some old guy. <laughs> Three years ago. <laughs> well, listen. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so is that so? In terms of the process, uh, you know, I'll have a drainage calculations and new plans. Um, prepared to submit to the board and go to the planning board at the same time. And I still need their blessings for the Lemon Street uh, access. Okay. Um, and I just share the calculations with Oh, yeah, DPW. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and so maybe we should continue this for 30 days. Okay. Sometime uh, so middle of February. February 25th. Sure, that, that yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I'm sorry, we have one uh, additional comment from the oh, audience. Hi, Ivy Graham, 3 Maple Street Extension. Oh, sure. So I live here. Yeah. 
Um, there's no piping out to the street. My our property floods pretty bad. Yeah. And the only way is, is that culvert that goes yeah. under the yeah. street. This is going to help you. So I just saw three um, flags. BBM oh, okay. Yeah. Flags on my property. So I didn't know if there was some other impact was going to happen to Maple Street no, Extension. No. Does that delineate wetlands on my property? Uh, we did have somebody take a look at that. Oh, okay. But I'm not sure whether or not they were flagged for any uh, wetlands or oh, anything okay. like that. But this is this is going to help your property mm -hmm. long term mm -hmm. because it's going to intercept this water from going down that way. So because this is going to go out that way and not right. down here anymore. Right. Exactly. Okay. So just you owned Buckland. Who owns Leonard? Leonard Street is owned uh, to the middle by both sides. I own half. They own oh, half. Okay. This is kind of a unique situation where the rights if you go back into the title and all that stuff. The rights are only belong to us, based on what they tell me. So you've been proposing improvements to Leonard, but you own it. Yeah, just pavement. One of the reasons why we're doing the utilities in the back end is so we don't have to disrupt that Leonard Street any further. Mm -hmm. No, we don't have to put sewer. We're, the other thing is. There's only a two-inch water main in uh, Leonard Street, which is not uh, what I consider adequate. So we'll be putting in a eight-inch uh, sewer main and a water main. That so there's a two-inch line that feeds Boxmill. Boxmill went wells because oh. they didn't want to participate in the uh, oh. improvements. So they they put wells in, from what I understand. Okay, so February 25th. Correct. Right. And I'll get the, or hopefully have the plans to two weeks ahead of time. One quick question. Okay. So on the Buckland Street side, it's, it's saying this is the owner? No. Are you saying you and these people own? No, no, no. I own. That's wrong. That's that's an assessor's map. Right. Uh, that, that's so incorrect. you own all this all the way back, or do they own? No, no. I own, I own the whole green thing up to Maple Street Extension. Okay. So you, you own to that, that line? Possibly. Right. I own that. Go back on there. Everything that shows up in green there up to Maple Street Extension, we own. Right. We don't own Maple Street Extension, but just right up to the intersection there. Right there. That's our ownership. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Well, appreciate your help. Bye-bye. John, hold on. You're welcome. You want me to sign all of us? Yeah, I'll plug in. We'll watch it on the 24th. So keeping the um, 30, yeah, 39 is one, and then 30, these are all still under NOI. Yeah, you need a pen? There we go. Yeah, we'll keep them all active until we, there we go. So who do you think is going to win Kansas City or Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, I'll get these tears. And I'll have, uh, uh, you guys can go on a nature. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to call Kansas City. All right. Anything to do with Kansas? Picking San Francisco, eh? I didn't say that. Yeah. I got a speeding ticket in Kansas, and I will never forgive them. So, right. Till I pay it, they take you on the basic point of gun to a mailbox, and they watch you put the money in the mailbox in an envelope. And then they tell you if they get you again, and you were only going as fast as the traffic, mind you. But I was from out of state driving a blue Corvette with a top down, clearly having a good time. Boom! <laughs> All right. Um, um, Number 10, they were pretty eager. Yeah, assistant town manager. That was the uh, town old parcel across from the uh, Sandy Beach. I, I agree with your comments on that. I think. I was wondering if my butter, someone said, sent pictures. I thought they were going to come tonight. So, so I don't see anyone in the audience. Uh, yeah, and you already sent that email to Elaine, right? I sent it as comments, and basically, I was sort of piggybacking what you guys did for the Princeton one, yeah. where you guys made a recommendation. Um, that you were hoping 
I assume the AG may want to consider recommending that the town considers delegating management of the subject parcel to the to the commission. And that was uh, this parcel here. Um, yeah, it's got the stream adjacent to it. Right. It's got the two culverts that were put in, the barrel culverts. Yeah, here's the memo from uh, Elaine. This parcel here. And I made comments that, yeah, you can zoom in. Why do you keep taking the head off that poor bird? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I. Uh, but it, basically, we had we had the filing for the uh, for the culvert that that runs under here. Yep. And um, this the, the wetland replication was done. You got the perennial stream running through here. Um, basically, the entire site's under the 200 foot um, riverfront, and they used this area as staging when they went to rebuild the. You know the, the head wall and mm -hmm. uh, and the second culvert, and the second culvert sized for with the two, it sized for the 25 year storm. You know, so when we had that MVP meeting, the concerns were where culverts go on for perennial streams, culverts go on the roadway. Um, we'll keep an eye on that because because of the because of the flooding. You know, yep. so. Um, Okay. Yeah. Well, we already you already sent the recommendation to Wayne, so no. Oh, uh, you didn't. No, I oh. just because that's what's on the agenda now. Do you guys? Oh yeah. 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 So, that, then. So. Does that make sense <laughs> to everyone? Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. Sorry. So, all right. I'll send that along. All right. Um. So the annual report, the draft, on sent that out. Did everyone get a chance to take a look at that? Everyone's yeah. happy with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess we can forward that to yeah. Maria. Yeah, why don't we take a vote on that? I can just have a motion to finalize the annual report for 2019. So moved. Second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, public forum requests. So the certified abutters. Um, this is for the dog park, right? Yeah. So <coughs> they they were requesting because it's such a, a large parcel. Um, if they could do with you know enlarge the area to a thousand feet um, because of uh, uh, the issues they'd have with the 250 acre site, you know, yeah. notifying above is every within 300 feet. So their the concerns is. Yes. Everyone, even with, uh, you know, the, you know there's, the there's probably going to be no butters even within a thousand. I was just going to ask that. Does that mean there's any butters there? There might yeah. be one. Um, if I can find uh, a work session. Yeah, in our Does anybody know exactly where the dog park's going oh, it's to be? Public. Yeah, he, has a, public he sent out a uh, plan. <laughs> So, it, I was trying to figure out, yeah. is that where yeah. overflow parking is right now? Uh, yes, yeah, so across the street from that. Is that, that that's what it looked like on the plan, at least, that's where it was going. But no, I don't think it's the overflow I mean, most of the surveying was done around so, there. So the yeah. southerly side of the, I think yeah. the southerly yeah. side of the fruit street. Like that color colored yeah. one, it looked like you could tell where it was. I don't think I threw in, the thing I sent to them, um, showed the whole, the whole, the no whole sorry, site. But it's um, yeah, it's all I think I think we're good with the thousand feet, Don. Because uh, yeah, let me let me bring it up in the jazz. Yeah, I agree. We're all good. Yeah. You good? Yeah, we're, uh, we're good. It we're should okay hit the. That. It might hit the, uh, you know, the uh, sawmill people out there. They about Jane, they've they got a finger that comes up, so they'd okay. probably be the only butter, and that's all. Woods, their the, the sawmill's not even near that. So yeah, I'm sure you know, anybody that has complaints about this. That dog this park would, will that find this would, have, and it's <laughs> it's part of the master plan. It's, it won't this area's been set aside for Pox and Rec. <laughs> okay, so yeah. right. we're good with it. The thousand cool. foot. All right, okay. all right. Then we got the complaint for the dock and the clearing. It didn't look to me like they did too much clearing there, did it? Right. You know, so I, from from my perspective. If the commission was looking at this, it would be like, well, is this something we would have approved? So if someone applied to put a dock on a pond, you guys have done that in the past. 
yeah, you might have said, well, we just want a, a, maybe a smaller path. You know, all the canopy was there. It seemed like it was the understory that got cut. So you guys might say, well, you know, you might narrow the amount of area that got understory, understory that got disturbed. But obviously, it's it's you know, then it would be subject to the landowner, which is White yeah. State Park. Yeah. You know, and so they, DCR. Yeah. So you guys would say, well, yeah, we're amenable as long as the owner is, and the owner is not amenable. He's already talked about. They were supposed to send that that abutter information to say no. We don't want the we don't want the dock. Right. We don't want the. Oh, DCR clear. was going to send that. Yeah. Did you see that email yeah, yes. that, that sure. I sent out their their response? So in essence, you know, it's they have full jurisdiction. They, they have the authority, and even if they want to go to another state agency, they can go to DP under Chapter 91. They would have to apply for a permit there. They didn't get that. So DP, yeah, but then DP would just say the same thing. So, so okay, we we do it, but no. is the property owner amenable? And, and then, what, what you know. Know. So why don't we just send a letter to the owner, letting him know that um, DCR isn't. You know. uh, well, I'm thinking we should just send a send a, a you know support letter to. I can respond to DCR DCR saying, you know, you guys have full, you know. You have the ability to do it, so we'd support you. Um, okay. You know, but basically, right? it's something that we'd be amenable to seeing as a filing after the fact. But you don't want it, so why don't you get rid of it, and then okay, we'd be, it would be a moot point for us under the under the act and the bylaw. Because the problem is, is they're not going to say. Well, he said, this is to put a fire under them. Okay. So, because it was an oversight. Because the the uh, environmental police said to do it, and then they just had it. They just wanted to check it with with their legal, and then legal never got back to them saying, "Yeah, you send the letter." So okay. I would say, give them a. I can I can stay on top of it, but they should be. Yeah, saying, they should be driving. They should be driving the bus, you know. Yeah. Because okay. it's their land, you know. Right. So they don't okay. want it. You know what PCR stands for, right? <laughs> don't care. Really? 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, well, I don't so expect much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the biannual, uh, well, this we have one? the municipal conflict of interest. We need to sign. Is Scott here for this last one? Can we pop that up? Oh, Scott, are you? I'm sorry, I didn't see you back there. <laughs> I'm, only, I'm only here at this time to discuss Valentine's Circle. Oh, all right. <laughs> Come on up. Can I do that? Sorry. <laughs> I thought he was playing Madam. I didn't realize you were back there. You should have. Uh... It's entertaining. So, so I kept We didn't get this till today, so it was that's not on. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I appreciate this kind of brief. But so you wanted to get to all those other ones. So, you know, they needed to go before these. Before Valentine's Circle, Don Lucia. So, this was last before the commission in 2013. Prior to that, it was 1989. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is clean up some old expired orders of conditions, right? So this is basically a shared driveway that comes off of Valentine Circle. Who was here? Who was here in 2013? Does anyone know anything about this property at all? I, know, I might have been. All right, so yeah, I, was, I was here. I'm going to give it to you at the very, very high level. So Valentine Circle is here. There was an order of conditions issued in 1989 to put a common driveway into service two houses. Okay, the common driveway required crossing a stream and a wetland and they had a replacement area of 4,600 square feet shown with a fill through the middle of it. So it was kind of ambiguous as to how the edge of the wetland was determined back then, et cetera, et cetera. This house was built, this house was never built, and then the order of conditions expired. We, when my client purchased this property to then build it in 2013, we identified that there was an old open order of conditions for this. So back in 2013, we sort of evaluated um, sites and found substantial, uh, I would call it non compliance. Okay, so if you look, this is Valentine Circle over here. This is the driveway as it was built coming in back in 2013. This blue line was where, is where the actual wetlands were flagged in 2013, here and here. Okay, this right over here was the replacement area as defined back then. They were supposed to build 4,600 square feet, they only built, ended up about 2,700 square feet. There was some additional area over here that was more wetlands than what they had originally shown back in 89. 
we counted that to our benefit. But then what, what then was to the detriment of the applicant was they made this wetland crossing like way wider than it should have been made. So instead of filling, you know, 4,600 square feet coming into here, they actually filled like 8,500 square feet, yeah. right? So they, like, they just kind of threw it all in there. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we filed uh, an application to come in to build this house, put a conservation restriction on this, and then try to fix this problem so we could deal with the non-compliance of the 1989 order of conditions. The way that was done was by, by proposing three new replication areas. There was going to be no new wetland filling by our client uh, to build his house in the buffer, but he shared this driveway with another person over here, and the responsibility of this driveway is now really wasn't his or theirs, but they sort of inherited the 89 problem. So we proposed an order of conditions in 2013. I was involved in this, and Dan Wells from my office that said, okay, let's restore, this is along the edge of the edge of the existing driveway. Let's restore this area here back into a wetland that shouldn't have been filled in the first place. Let's restore this area of wetlands that shouldn't have been restored in the first, filled in the first place. And let's build an additional uh, replication area over here of 1,900 square feet. If you add those all up, the numbers kind of balanced out, so we would at least have a no net loss situation of wetlands if we were to rewind the clock all the way back to 1989. The commission agreed to this protocol. We went into the field to implement this. Because that was pre-bylaw. Pre-bylaw. So Bob Ingram act. was the agent at the time. And um, what happened is Bob went out here and he looked at these two areas and said, you know, they're so fringe, the wetlands functioning healthy, this buffer zone has grown back with healthy vegetation, there's mature trees growing in there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I really don't want you guys to come in here and do all this work right next to the wetlands for what he viewed as a minor benefit here and here. So Bob and the contractor and us all sort of agreed, okay, let's try not to build those ones in the field and let's try to make this one over here as big as possible if we can overcome those two areas the need to build them. So we went in there with, with the blessing of the commission, took this area and made it as big as we could before you start chasing the grade into the neighbor's property. And this is what was built during the time that there was an order of conditions valid on this property, which was 2013 to 2016. So we only were able to make it 3,200 square feet. Okay, I won't get into all the numbers for you, but it's about two, just shy, of, let's call it 2,000 square feet short of the big picture plan that it was intended to satisfy. Okay, mm -hmm. this ha still hasn't been planted yet. It's graded, the soils are correct, it's at the right elevation, it's can be, it can work fine as a wetland. It needs to still be planted or outside of the valid order of conditions even to continue to do any more work on this. So we have, now we have two old expired orders of conditions. This house has been built, we would like to get a certificate of compliance yeah. on it. We still need to get record the conservation restriction on this property. It's also a rare species habitat next to halt property, blue spotted salamander habitat. So we have a CR we still have to record on this. And then we have this issue of we're 2,000 square feet short on bringing the site into full regulatory compliance of having a no net loss wetland situation. So I want to come before you with a, a way of closing all this out, all right? Um, and it requires a little bit of brainstorming us to the best way to do that. We've run out of room to reasonably create new wetlands to get that additional land. We could, there's a couple of options. We could, this can't be chased back any further. The grade's too steep and there's a house right here. It's like, it's like cutting into a cliff at this point, okay? So this, that, that's as big as this can get. It even creeped onto the neighbor's property um, with the contractor inadvertently. We could go back to the original sort of concept of pulling out the, the fringe areas next to the driveway and pick up our land there. It is obtainable, but then it goes against what Bob Ingram had wanted to see happen in 2013 um, of preserving that buffer zone. That's an option that exists. Another option that exists would be to take the original wetland replacement area, which never grew in correctly from 1989. It's just they basically cut the grade down for some kind of compensatory storage and all grew in with, with um, uh, glossy buckthorn. And kind of try to do something to make it better, sort of an invasive management 
uh, protocol for that area. That's another option that exists. A third option that I could think of was this area, this could be treated as a limited project. And in limited projects, you don't always have to meet the one-to-one -one requirement. The commission could waive the need to satisfy that additional 2,000 square feet of wetland creation. That's an option as well. A fourth option could be to seek some kind of off-site mitigation as appropriate. But I couldn't even do or have my client do additional work without filing yet another notice of intent unless we had a um, jointly agreed upon and sort of enforcement order to do, to do work on the property because uh, that would be because we wouldn't want to be doing the work without some kind of an order either an enforcement order mutually agreed upon or a new order of conditions so this is that's kind of the pickle that we're stuck in uh, I'm looking to try to clean this up for the guy um, and I'm bringing this issue before you so that I don't just give you a certificate of compliance and showing you non-compliance because um, that wouldn't really bring yeah, us across the finish line that. Yeah. so that's where we stand now, Jeff, were you with the commission in 2013? Yeah, yeah. So, so you're probably, you might be yeah, the only one that remembers this yeah. situation, right? Uh, the two vice chairs go back. Away. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, right oh, okay. I think Kerry was here, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe you, maybe, maybe your first day. This is like your first day on the job. Um, but in the past, we have I'm issued I'm friendly enforcement orders. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Right, right. 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 Um, Rather than going through an NOI, yeah. Yeah. I guess it depends on which way we want to handle it. You know? Yeah, I mean, I don't think are you asked looking for us to make a decision tonight. No, I mean, I'm just filling you in on this because okay. I realize you don't have it. You know, maybe Matt and I take a walk on the site and kind of talk it out a little bit, and he could give the commission a recommendation. Maybe you know, based on your recollection of the site, you have some direction you want me to to give further consideration to but I'm sort of bringing this before you, opening up a dialogue so we can figure out the best way to kind of move this move this ball forward. Yeah, let's do that. Um, Don, do you have these? I got yeah. I, I I yeah, a, a, a report. I sent a report. Everything I just verbalized to you, I submitted a letter report requesting okay. a, co a conversation. And if, we wanna, if you want to maybe, Matt and I can walk the site, we could have part two of this at your next hearing, and there's a more informed yeah, uh, sort of conversation that we can have. Matt and um, one of your staff, Tom. Tom, we walked it in the fall. Okay. A while ago. Yeah. So. So did you just, discuss with Tom then this whole, whole concept and issue, or? Yeah, we kind of we kind of went through all this. Didn't come to any definitive resolution. We had a couple of potential ideas that he was going to investigate. <laughs> yeah, we were waiting for basically him to get back to us with something. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know if all the things we had thought, oh, maybe this, maybe that, all were out dead ends, perhaps. Right. Well, you can look at the report that I gave you, and maybe yeah. Yeah. maybe you and I can do another site walk, and then we can report back to the commission at, the, at your next meeting and um, try to decide what, what makes sense on bringing this. So and like you know, obviously, for the, for the remaining work on the on the, that area, the commission can issue you know, a friendly enforcement order to get that up and running. And then if there's other things based on review that would be incorporated, you know, the commission would be amenable to incorporating that. That might be the cleanest way to do it, rather than right. filing another notice of intent. Or yeah. Right. It's yeah. just restoration work. It's not like reconstruction. Right. You know, yeah. yep. No, no. Look, I agree. That can be a simpler administrative yeah. way to handle these things. Yeah. Okay. All right. That sounds good. So if you can touch base with Matt and figure out a good time to get together. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. You got something else. Recommendations for the Green Committee? Yeah, so the, su the Sustainable Green Committee is kind of regrouping. I guess they've been inactive for the past few years. And they would like someone on the commission to be represented on the Green Committee. So do we have any? You don't have to answer tonight, but if <laughs> you want to think about it, and let me know that they just uh, I talked to the lady, I forget what her name was. Um, Amy. Amy? Didn't she volunteer? Yeah, I think it was Amy, actually. Amy yeah, yeah. So, um, so next meeting, all the doors will be locked, and no one will be allowed to leave <laughs> until someone agrees. Well, 
Lasso's See, ordinarily, someone that's not here would get appointed. Yeah, but everybody's here, <laughs> so we can't do that. And we're all basically on two committees other than this one. So be on no. alert, everybody. If you don't show up next meeting, <laughs> you're in. very likely to be on a sustainable green committee. Are they looking for? A they're number? reorganized and they're just coming back, right? They're like asking for like tons. It sounds like it was very large. I'll help pick up litter. <laughs> there as far as I'm going. Okay, is that the last one? Oh, I have one. Thanks. Can I say something? Yep. Um, so uh, I'm speaking at the MSCC conference again. I think you mentioned it. Did yeah. you guys, are you guys going? Oh, yes. Thank you. Do we have to do that by? Yeah. It's at the end of February this year. Don. Oh, it's in February? Yeah. MACC conference. Oh, when do we have to let you know? <laughs> yeah, you got one well, we'll now. Yeah, when's the deadline? God, I, so I don't know, week? but it's the end of February this year. So yeah. the week yeah. Right, yeah. If you guys so want to go, let me yes. know. Yeah, it's like the 28th? Uh, yeah, I get a 29th. 29th, there you go. Oh, February 29th? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay, I guess that's so. If you, if so you're doing a presentation there, Carrie? Yeah. Okay. We're having a booth and stuff, but it was just mostly a reminder to tell you guys if you wanted to go, you better. Yeah. Because, no, so thank you, because together. I was going to ask Dawn, like, when do I have to send, send you the form? Yeah. Okay. yeah, so if you guys <laughs> can submit, March, if you if you want to go, submit the stuff so I can work with uh, Adina. We fill out the form to send it to it. you, right? Yeah, you can we send it to you. Right. Yeah, you can submit it. I will uh, figure it out yeah. without Adina. And then he'll get you Remember reimbursed. Yeah. And then we have yeah. the conflict of interest training, the annual, uh, you know, we got to read through it and sign it. Wednesday. Every two years. So you guys are up, I think, this year. When's that year up this year? As soon as you can. Just, yeah, as soon as you can do it. But if you did it and last year for another committee, you still do it again. Yeah, then, yeah, then that gives you two-year extension. So. Yeah, so you don't have to do it. I don't know. I'm going to go ask. Yeah, so if you, once you get a certificate, it's good for two years. So just let the town clerk know. And if you want to copy me clerk. on it. So I can, I can, because I think Melissa sent me hers, and I've got others. I got Hodgepodge. Well, I, I came in mine in to uh, Yeah, that's so what I figured. So, oh, so you know. All right, before y'all keep moving, I got two more things I want to mention. So, um, Mass DP is having an advisory commit or advisory group for the updating the stormwater handbook. Um, so, FYI, the first meeting is February 12th in Boston. Um, they invited some municipal reps from MACC, MMA, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I plan to go. I'll. Get to let you guys know, but if you have any specific comments for updating the stormwater handbook, which falls under the wetlands, folks, um, let me know, and I'll try to express that on behalf of the town. Right. And then the last thing was, um, if you hadn't seen it yet, the um, there is a comment period now for the uh, results of the mediation of the MS4 permit, um, and there's some stuff in there that affects Hockington, um, specifically the Charles River stuff. I think we'll have to remove more pollution. Um, and then there's another year to update the ordinance for the post construction, so that impacts us because that will impact um, the stuff we review. So is that in a comment period right now and not official, or is it official? No, it's, it's a public comment period about the mediation, like whether you agree that the mediation was okay, and then they have to reissue the permit, and then they'll okay. have an another comment period sure. for the changes to the permit. It's such like weird legal mumbo jumbo. But it seems like the biggest things that impact us is that it looks like you could have more time to do what you need to do. Um, we got another year to do that ordinance, which we're going to have to get approved at town meeting. I don't know who's taking the lead in the town. And um, when does the public well, comment close, Gary? January 27th for the stuff about the mediation. Um, I don't think. I wouldn't recommend other than saying, yeah, it looks good, because I think it helps most folks out. Okay. Um, the only one I have that much detail is the stuff about the Charles River. They, they took off some assumptions, but everybody's potential for phosphorus went up a little bit. I didn't look at Hopkins in particular. Okay. Um, yeah, and then then I heard something, for, I, like, they think that EPA will reissue a couple months. They'll reissue the permit, so there's still a bit of time. All right. But most of the changes were beneficial to municipalities, I think, in my personal opinion. Good. Personal opinion. Okay, anything else? I have else? one quick bit of news from, from Zach. Um, the planning board voted 7 to 2 to move forward with a Zach proposal to establish a ground mounted solar farm overlay district to try to control uh, solar farm development in town. 
And where the proposal is right now is essentially saying every solar farm that's already here or in process, plus Harvey's, plus one other property similar to Harvey's, would be the overlay district, plus the 495 strip. Uh, it's the entire clothes. town. Uh, no, it's not. It's what, much less than What's excluded? Everything else. Everything else. Everything else. Yeah, so right. everything east of Hague Road. No, everything that isn't already in process yeah. and not or existing is, would not be, would would be, not be included. eligible for solar panels. Plus would 495. Would yes, would not. Yeah, Plus so, Harvey's. But, so it extends from Wood Street. Essentially, it would, allow, to, it would allow new solar development only along 495 in the medium strip, medium strip and the clover leaves and Harvey's. Although they're kicking around a couple of Harvey's. spots. Over a certain size, Ted, or period, no, period. Just period. period. Okay. But they are talking about, like, for example, over by Pinefield and Fruit Street. Right. That's some pretty ripped up ground over there that the town owns. So that might be a place that they'd add to the overlay district. Okay. Um, and according to town council, that says it's great that you are not excluding solar farms. In fact, that's a whole lot of land you're offering for solar farms, and they yeah. don't think the state would have a problem with it. The intent was to stop chopping down trees yeah. and to stop <coughs> infringing on neighborhoods and changing the character of neighborhoods. Nice. Well so done. the planning board voted 7-2 to move forward with studying that and, and secure space on the one. <coughs> <coughs> hmm? <coughs> Frank Durso. Yeah. Jane Moran. Jane Moran. That's it. We're on camera. Did they say why? Just because they support solar, and I was just um, probably yeah, yeah. It myself. It's just yeah, wants yeah. there to be more yeah, sure. chance for solar development. Right. Um, Jane That's the just side seemed to limiting. think Frank was right. <laughs> Jane okay. is very. Right. Anyway, I just thought thank, thank you for the update. All right, motion to adjourn. So motion to adjourn. Does anybody with her? Second. Second. Third. All in favor. Thank you, Mike.